Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Veterans Day if you're in the USA. And if you're in Canada, happy Remembrance Day. Good morning. This is Mary at the Mary Atier, and this is November 11th, 2021. Welcome to my desk. Welcome to my desk. Good morning. I have a lot going on on my desk this morning. Let me get out here to my stream on my tablet. Hi, Mitzi. Good morning, Mitzi. How are you this morning, Mitzi? Miss Early Bird? <laughs> I'm going to work on binding my the rest of my signature in my journal. I don't know if I'm going to put the cover on it, but we're going to get it bound. And I decided, I was looking at this yesterday, and I do think this is sturdy enough to actually put in my, now that I've played with it, I'm going to ink the mountains here a little, put some sort of Maybe even some washi tape on the mountains. No, I don't know. I think I'll just ink them. I think that it is sturdy enough to put in my journal. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It needs to be cut down a little, which is good because I can cut off some of the raggy parts here. But this, this is going to, this journal, you know, I'm just keeping at it. And it is turning out nice. This is going to be a fun journal for me to do and I am going to finish it I'm going to embellish it so I'll be working on that this morning I, I'm binding it here so let me set it over here while I talk about this other I decided I was going to do the weaving project with Lisa and I went to Hobby Lobby the other day. I had to go to town anyway and I bought yarn for my project and I was able to match most of the colors here. Look at almost matches, almost matches this blue and um, I couldn't decide. Well, I do have a bright red. But I went a little bit darker maroon color here. I could have gotten a brighter orange red, but I went with the darker maroon. Then I, I couldn't decide whether I wanted gold or red. So I got both. <laughs> I know, if I don't use the gold, I can always use gold for something else. So, And this is Yarn B Yarn. It says Stitch 101 Acetate Copper Penny. Copper penny. I, I'm sure this is an acrylic yarn. But I think that one skein should be enough to do what I need to do. Um, I got some black for the lines. And then for the white area, I've got this sort of a peachy blush color. So these are going to be nice colors. Now, I'm not going to work on weaving this morning. I'm just showing you the colors here. So I'm very happy with that. Let me put those aside. I just had to show you. And then I went to the hardware store and got a saw. Uh, a non-electric one. A hacksaw. And this was the smallest one that they had. I was thinking more of a smaller one that I, you know, that I could use in my art. But this was a smaller one they had. So I got it. <laughs> it didn't, it was what? I, I forget. It wasn't much. Uh, under $10, I think, for this. Where's the, because I have to tear it here. It says it's an adjustable hacksaw. I don't know what adjusts. I suppose they mean you can take the blade out. Oh, and at Hobby Lobby, I did find some weaving needles. 
some weaving needles at Hobby Lobby. Isn't that interesting? I was going to order them off of Amazon, but since they were right there in front of me, I said, and these only cost me $4.99 for three of them. They had another packet, and I think I did a, a Soology one that was just one needle, and it only cost me a couple bucks. So I've got big, long weaving needles, Popo, and these are not sharp. <laughs> well, this one's a little pointy, but these aren't sharp. These are to weave with. And I like this one. I didn't realize they have a curved blade to them, so you can just kind of pick up the the threads as you go, the warp. So I don't want to lose those. I'm going to put those over here. And let's let's see if I can't cut this bar off this morning. That's really what I want to start out doing. I'm not going to warp it. I'm just going to I'm just going to prep it. And what I need to do, and the reason I brought this bought this saw is well, I didn't want an electric one. <laughs> Cut my finger off. I'm not good with power tools. I avoid them. I leave them to the to the power people. <laughs> I leave them to people who really know what they're doing. But what I'm hoping that I can do... Oh, this is a big, long saw. I don't know if I can get in there with it. What I'm hoping I can do is, is cut this off. I don't think I can get in here with it. Is that even show? Oh, the blade is pointed up. Well, maybe you have to adjust it so the blade points down, I would think. Doesn't the blade have to point down? I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'll have to wait and ask my brother. I need the blade to point the other way. It falls out. I need it to point this way. Huh. It'll say... If I ask my brother, he'll say, what'd you buy that for? And I said, because your big old saw, he had a big electric one. Well, it wasn't a big one, but it was a scary one. It scared me. And I said, because, you're, because your electric one scares the, the sugar out of me. I don't like power tools because I'm not, I'm afraid I'll cut my fingers off. There. Now, can I... I just want to get in there and... But it's too long. It's too long. I can't get in there. Grr. I just want to cut it off. Let's try it this way. Oh, this is going to take a while. And... I can't get up close to the, because of this, I can't get close to the edge. I'm only going to go as close as I can. And cut. It is cutting. Isn't this what you wanted to watch this morning? Let me stop and say good morning to everybody. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this during the 
crafting chat later on this morning. I just wanted to see, wanted you to see what I was doing. So I'll spend my crafting chat time sawing this piece of wood off. I They didn't have a smaller one. This one's pretty long. I guess I could use down here too. Yeah. I could use down there. I'll, I'll work on this later this morning. I don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to bore you to pieces cutting this. This piece of wood needs to come out of here so that I can warp this frame. So I'm working on that. I got lots of projects going here. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm going to, I'm going to work on binding my caboodle. Sewing the signatures in. My Asian caboodle. Let me get it out here. And then I'll come say good morning to everybody. Mitzi was in here this morning right off the bat. Right off the bat. Okay. Let's see who I can say good morning to. There's Mitzi. And hi, Kimberly. Only at Mary's are we sewing at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> The house is nice and quiet. Well, I, I have to admit to you guys, humbly admit, that power tools are not my forte. I, uh, <laughs> I had to take a woodworking class in, in college. And, uh, oh my goodness, I still have the frame up in Wisconsin that I made. <laughs> Talk about distress. <laughs> but I bought this beautiful, beautiful Hawaiian wood. It it's it was really it's a pretty wood. And uh <laughs> my porch it was just taught by a shop teacher and of course, you know, and they had these big old big old blades that were around. I mean they were huge and a big old blade coming well, I think it was a round one. Big old round blade and I'm going, yeah, there's my hand. Keep my hand out of there. <laughs> it scared me. And he, my teacher knew it frightened me. And, of course, you know, they got a kick out of it because those power tools like Scott, they're nothing to them. They understand all those power tools. But I'm as afraid of power tools as, <laughs> as Popo keeps teasing me about my big long needles. You know, well, at least a needle, at least a needle. I might poke myself once or twice, but, you know, I can control where it goes a little more. <laughs> okay, so we're going to work on binding my caboodle. I took, Kimberly says, I took uh, industrial arts in high school. I loved every minute of it, except for the bandsaw. Yeah. Well, I liked learning about it. I liked, you know, I liked the lectures and and I liked seeing what other people did. But could I build a decent frame? I mean, <laughs> no. But, you know, actually, I did get it put together and it actually turned out kind of cool because it was artsy. It would have been considered, you know, someday I'll get to show it to you. And I did put one of my paintings in there. Um, and it's been in there for years and years and years. Um, but I don't hang very much artwork on the walls, original artwork. Well, I can't around here except for in this room. But anyway... <laughs> I did get it framed, and he passed me in the course. I don't know. I think he passed me out of pity, because <laughs> I, I, it was not my. The industrial arts was not my. Not my. Well, I enjoyed it, but I just wasn't good at it. I wasn't really talented at woodworking, but there are some girls who were. And those saws, I mean, they could handle them just as good as the the guys could. Uh, but they grew up around them, and they've been trained on them. And, and uh, well, I can handle a heat gun and a glue gun. 
and maybe I might be able to handle a Dremel. I don't have a Dremel, but, uh, you know, I have to even take my time loading the little mini attacher. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Good morning, Sue. Kimberly's here. Arlene is here. Good morning, Arlene. If you use the center of the blade, can you get closer? I think so, Arlene. I think so. Mitzi says, it sounds like it's cutting. Yeah, it's starting to cut. It is starting to cut. And that wood is not a hard wood. So, But I just don't want to spend the time here having you guys watch me. <laughs> By the hand. You know, my brother would just get out his little saw and go... But but his the one that he used to cut those pieces apart that I'm going to use in my diorama, I mean, it was a bandsaw, and it was electric, and it had a guard to it, but the blade was here, you know, and it was electric, and it goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. except for that wood was really a hard, a hard wood, and he thought it was, car if, if it was cardboard, it was a really strong, strong cardboard. Let's see. Kimberly says, good morning. Hi, Jacqueline. Good morning, Jacqueline. Jacqueline says she's watching on TV today. I'm on TV. I'm on somebody's TV. Good morning, Jacqueline. Glad to have you join us. She says she's just lurking. She says, happy Veterans Day to any of your family who served and fought for our freedom. Yes. I'm not going to go into a big lecture, but uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to the people who served in the military so that we can have our freedoms and continue to serve. So happy Veterans Day to all of our military uh, and their families who actually serve right along with them because, you know, when the when the member of the military, whether it's the the mother or the father, a lot of mothers serve in the military today. No matter which one is away, the family actually is at home um, trying to live their life with their their mother or their father being gone, serving in the military. So happy Veterans Day. And I don't know, I think England too. When when Canada celebrates uh, Remembrance Day, I think England does too. So I'm not sure about that because I don't know my England and Canadian. Maybe there's a Canadian in here who can let me know. Um, it's It's Remembrance Day. I know that because we were talking about it in... Rosemary's chat last night and boy I'll tell you that Rosemary Morris that Rosemary Morris is is just the most prolific and the most talented person she was she was gilding last night and I didn't realize when I went in there last night because I just I thought oh it's Wednesday night I have time I can watch Rosemary and she was gilding the cover of her sarcophagus very cool and she was telling us all about about gilding and the process of gilding and and I found it so interesting, well, even like on this, um just think of this as being gilded. this is not being gilded. this is done with my uh hot foil pen, but they gilded over encaustic and plaster. And, and and I suppose they gilded over wood too. But in the in the days gone by, the the a lot of the artists gilded over gilded, and I think they probably still do because Janet was there and was telling about watching an artist in her area gild over a plastic, I mean plaster, plaster, P L A S T E R, and I thought it was so interesting that they put that beautiful gold, um, gilded gold over wax and plaster, which is really a less stable. But then I thought, well, what do you have to have, Mary, to make it, 
you know, and I thought, well, maybe a really nice wood. Um, Rosemary was talking about how for the people who do woodworking, that the, the gilding is really pretty. And I suppose it's on as trim on the chairs. I've never seen a chair that had gilding on it, but the frames. Rosemary at one time had worked for a person who did, who needed gilders. I suppose he, he made frames and, well, and they probably did gallery art because she was talking about how when they submitted things that had to be uh, hand certified to be handmade. So, and they were talking about, she was talking about the glue, how the glue was made from rabbit, dried rabbit skin. And uh, I'm going, oh, <laughs> so, uh, but that's what they used back then. And I suppose a lot of our glues, even today, well, a lot of our glues today are probably man-made from, you know, chemi not chemical, but uh, man-made um, media. So, I don't know. I'm, I, I really have a lot to learn about all of that. So, I'm not even going to speak to it. But, I did find Rosemary's stream. She's working on the Egyptian caboodle, which is a sarcophagus, an Egyptian sarcophagus. And boy, uh, uh, let me tell you, I've got the kit and I'm so tempted to get it out and play with it, but I want to, I want to finish this. I, I just don't want to set this aside. I want to get it done. And this is where I bound here with the red thread. And I do like that red thread going through there. So, and there'll be red threads for three others. So, Rosemary Morris. Very interesting, Rosemary. Uh, Arlene is here. Kimberly's here. Rhonda. Good morning, Rhonda. Mrs. Gigi is here. Good morning, Gigi. Kimberly is here. She says, Rhonda, I got all my Christmas stuff going. Like a little elf. Oh, our Kimberly elf. <laughs> Are you talking about Christmas... Um, Art ornaments, or are you talking about actually decorating? You know what? Thanksgiving is only what? Next Thursday? A week away? Well, not quite. Maybe two weeks away. Next week is... Next week we have to take my brother to... Yeah, it's two weeks away. Thanksgiving is two weeks away. Oh, I got out the I'm so I'm so good. Yeah. Thanksgiving falls on the twenty fifth. So it's two weeks away. Which means I need to get busy in my my little recipe book because I want this done by Thanksgiving. And I've, I've made good progress on this. Now, this was made, I practiced on this. And as you can see, it's practice. I was learning. But I really do like it. This was done with the expanding spine. And uh, I'm glad I did my practice work first. I learned about it first. But this, this is turning out nice. But I want to finish these pages before. Uh, by the time November is over, I want both these journals. That well, I don't know if I'll have this one all embellished, but it'll I'll be a a good way around it. And this spine, this spine, will turn out nice, nice and even. I I was a lot more. Let me get these out of here because I'm going to start binding them in. This spine is nice and even. I'm really proud of my my scoring because <laughs> usually I'm wonky with stuff but this this turned out nice so that's what I'm going to work on this morning is finding I got that needle out now what did I do with it 
Did I put it right back in? Yes. I'm going to thread that needle. And we're going to bind the next. And I need to make another one of these. And I do think I'm going to make it out of this sheet right here. Because I, I think this one turned out. I think this one's very usable. I'm very proud of this. <laughs> um, and it needs to be cut down. But we're not going to do that right away. We are going to find the next signature in here. Which I think will be this one. But the butterflies would be flying upside down. And I did put a gold wash on, on, on all of these. But the thing is... Um, let me get back up here to chat. Um, it looks, well, you can see, you can see, I can see the lights probably shining on it for you. Yeah, I can see the, the designs, like there's a flower there and I can see the stenciling behind it. See, that's really evident on this one, but I put the wash on there because when I go to put my embellishments on there, I don't want the the stenciling, like here's some that I did not put wash on. I think the stenciling would compete with my embellishing, and it's almost too much. So I wanted to push, I wanted to push my painty paper into the background. So that's why I did that, and the perfect choice was gold. Maybe I'll do this one because it's, you can really see the pattern on this one. See that beautiful leaf right here? Well, I see it. I don't know if you guys can see it with the light shining on it. There you see it. Really good. So, let's do this one next. So all I'm doing is finding them in. Let me go back and say good morning to everybody. I, I said hello to Rhonda. Kimberly, were you able to craft all day? I think it was Tuesday, yesterday. And Kimberly answered and says, yes, Rhonda, I got all my Christmas stuff going like a little elf. That copper penny is a lovely color. Isn't that that yarn? That I really did get the right colors and I was so happy they had the colors in the colors that I wanted um the red the red could have been a little bit lighter a little bit brighter but I think it will work with the other colors that I have let's see and you know I got gold I could put gold on there instead of red I, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to make it the backgrounds red or gold. So I'll decide that when I get to doing it. Let's see. Rhonda's welcoming everybody in. They're mostly saying good morning up here at the top. So I think I've said good morning to everybody. Let's go down to the bottom. There's Hudson Sailor Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. Hi, Ann. Ann. And we'll have her crafting chat room open today at 10 Eastern, 9, uh, 9 Central. And I will be there. I'm going to, I'm going to do two things this morning. I'm not going to be out of my recliner. I'm going to be here at my desk. I'm going to saw that piece of wood and I want to catch up with carving my erasers. I got about six to go. Let's see, I did... I did uh, A, B, C, D, and E, I believe. Did I do E? No, I have E, F, G, H, I, J to do. K, this is the 11th day. So I've got, I've got six or seven erasers, but they're easy ones. Um, you know, like E are all straight cuts. F is a straight cut. G is a curve, H is a straight cut, I is pretty easy to do, I, J. J, you know, it's a pretty easy carve. K, K will probably be my hardest one because of the three inner points. I'm working on the carving out the, you know, where the, 
where the you know the inner points of the of the letter the V's in there. So let's get busy on this. I think I've said everybody good morning to everybody. Nancy says, Arlene, those woodworking skills are great to have. Yes, they are, if you're not afraid of the power tools. <laughs> I do have my, and I think this is the top here. I didn't mark which was the top and the bottom. Although this might be the top because I started up, well, I, I bound it in the center. Uh, it just depends. Well, here, let's see uh, what matches up here. Yeah, I think I, I didn't mark the top or bottom on this. I think this is the top here and my bottom is. No, yeah. Let's do it this way. Yeah, it goes like this. So so this would be the top up here. But I didn't bind it that way. I bound it. Well, I don't know how I bound it. So I'm working I'm working uh I think I decided I wanted this to be the front and I need to straighten out this score line. It's a little wonky here. My score line went a little bit crooked, but I can straighten that out. I'll do that later. So, I have to decide. I'm only doing four signatures, so I have to decide, do I want to leave a mountain there? Let's get out my other signatures. Where did I put those? So... This one is next. So if I leave a mountain right here, leave this valley right here, I should say, leave a valley, and come into the next valley here, I'll have, I'll have a mountain to put something in there if I want. Or I could come in there, and I'll still have that mountain to put my extendable page, but I've got plenty of folds, or I could cut some off over here, but let's leave one there. Let's leave a valley in the middle. And I don't know. Do I want to leave a valley there and leave a valley here? If I leave every other one, If I leave every other one, I've got plenty of room to add. Kind of, it's a lot of space. So I think I'll leave that. I'm deciding here. Leave that one. Put this one together. I like them together. I might have to cut one off up here. So I left one at the beginning. So... there. I could leave one in the middle, and I could just put them all together. That's pretty close together, though. I'm deciding what I want to do. If I put them all together, they're like that, and I have several left. But I don't like that. So let's put one Let's put one here and leave a couple at the back. And put one. I'm deciding where I want to put these signatures in here. Put one there and one there. Now I've left two. Let's put that one there. So I'm leaving a valley. At, I'm leaving a valley in the front and two at the back. Do I like that? 
Or maybe I want to put two at the front and leave one. Two at the front. Two signatures right at the front. Leave a valley. Put two signatures at the back and leave two valleys. I think that's how I'll do it. Well, that goes in there. Yeah, I'll leave a valley in here in the middle. If I want to put, I could put another signature in there, but I could put a pocket page in there. And, and, you know, I could work something in there. So I'm going to put my next signature, let's do this one, right in here. Then we're going to leave one. We're going to do a signature here and here and then leave two here and here and leave this one and then this one will be the back cover here and boy that's nice and straight i need to straighten out that other one okay i know what i'm doing you actually know what you're doing i think i know so i want to i want to bind this in We'll do this one at the front. And I think I said, this is my top. So let's put it this way. Here. And I think that matches up with these. And it does. So, we're gonna go in here here. I need my awl. And we're going to pokey some holes. And I usually don't use, but I do want this to turn out, look like I tried to do it profession or uh, the right way, Rosemary says. We'll do it the right way, just for you, she said. But I'm kind of one, when I bind my journals, I just eyeball it. Because for me, especially my own art journals, when I'm not making a specific journal, uh, I don't have to have perfection. I mean, it doesn't have to be all exact, but... Let's go through that a little bit more because I'm going to have to come through it on the other side. And this one. Keep your fingers out of the way, Miss Mary. Okay. So that worked now, but I do like on this one, especially that center one where I'll be going back in to come back this way and get these holes nice and where I can put my needle through them. Yeah, I can't see that one. Where's it at? Right there. You love the gold pages? Thank you, Nancy. Arlene, those woodworking skills are great to have. Okay, let me go down to the bottom. Nancy says, Arlene, the cotton has a paper backing that you peel off after using your inkjet printer. I love it. You'll have to look for more. What, was, what were they talking about? Uh, let me go up a little. And Laura, did I say good morning to you, Anne? I was I started talking about your crafting chat being open. And Anne, I'm going to I'm gonna be sawing and carving in your chat this morning. Okay, those look good to me. Right there. Now I want if this is the top that I'm going to be coming in, I'm going to be putting this at the front, so I want it to go this way. 
right? No. Yes. No, that's the bottom. I need it to go this way. I was right. All right, so... But that's the front. So really, I need it to go this way. Because it's going to open up this way. So I need it to go in there. Okay, so I need to open up this to the center. Talking to myself, I need to find the center of my signatures. Which is right here. And mark the... Do the same... Oh... But you know what? I have to put it in here. Right there. Because this needs to... I made this the width of my journal, not the width of my signature. That's what happened. So it starts right... Right there. We'll do the first one here. And that's how much space I've got at the top. And at the bottom, I've got more space at the top than I do the bottom. That looks about right. About like that. And the pages are easy to... And I think Rosemary only did two. Arlene says she's coloring pages to cover a box for Happy Mail. Ooh, neat. Kimberly says, how fun. I love my fabric journal. So great that you can do that with friends. Sailor. Let's see, what did Sailor say? say, say Hudson Sailor's name is Nancy. She says, I'm meeting with friends today, Nancy says, and working on a slow stitch fabric journal. Oh, how fun would that be? It will be fun to gather together. It's been a long time since we've been able to do that. Aw, yay, Nancy. You know, I really don't get together with people around here. Um, if there's any artsy ladies who do art journaling, I haven't met them in our little community. I'll bet there are some. People are pretty, um, you know, it's a small town. You'd think we'd be more friendly to each other, but <laughs> we're pretty, pretty, I, I don't know. I feel kind of isolated here. But that's okay. I, you know, I have you guys. You guys are my social. I don't socialize a lot around here. It's my fault. I could go to more. We are going tonight, though, to a veterans program. My grandniece's school is putting on a veterans program. And I surprised my nephew by saying I would go. He didn't think I would go because I haven't been going to a lot of that stuff. And mostly because they have it at the same time that I should be streaming. And, well, you know, I'd rather be with you guys. <laughs> Let's do this last one better. I like to come in from the other side so that, see, like I can hardly get my tool in there. And I just make the hole bigger. All right, so now I want to stitch this down. I've only got three more to go. But am I doing it right? I hope I am. I think I am. And I do double my threads, but lucky for you, it's not a big, long journal. So you you go just a couple inches and the width of your journal. But actually, 
you're only stitching between those two lines. But you go a couple inches out and you make three of those for to figure out how long your thread should be for something like this. And this is non-tassel. We're not making the tassel for this. So there's, and that three is for one, one thread binding. But because I'm using crochet thread, I like to double it because it strengthens it. And I do not, Arlene, I think was, well, no, it was somebody else who in there who was asking about waxing the threads. And Arlene said she does. I don't wax my threads as a general rule. I could, but I don't. <laughs> and to wax a thread, you have this little block of wax or sometimes at the quilting shops they'll sell wax in a circle sometimes they sell it in a little cube that has little slots in you know like a little plastic case and you just pull your thread through the wax like that and that gets wax on your thread and that makes it easier to slide through I think it strengthens the thread a little too And we're going to go in here and find the eye of my needle here. Get in there. I don't think I used this needle on the other one. And I think on my other signature, I started in the center. So we're going to go, we're going to start in the center here. In the center there. Did I start in this? I don't think it really matters on this because I'm going to tie it off. And I leave a loop. And then I have to come through. I should probably put a clip on here, but I think I can do it. I come through the cover and through the, through the signature block like that and I'm holding on to this you come through yeah that's looking good whoops and you come under the loop and pull it tight and then you go over here very simple go in and in through the cut that off in through there I could put fray check on here but I kind of like the fray I kind of like the fray the, my little bit of my binding is fraying off there but now that one was up a little bit higher right here but maybe that's just how I'm holding it it isn't going to be exact, but it's going to be almost. Almost is good enough for me. Now, I think if I look at this other one, you'll see my knot of my first one is here in the center. Right there. So that's what I want to do on this one. I can get to the center here. I'm going to love this journal. I I really do like it. Surprisingly, I'm not. I don't do a lot of Asian art. I don't do a lot of it, but surprisingly, I am enjoying this a lot. I should have pulled that tighter, maybe. But it is what it is. I didn't pull that too tight. Maybe I can still pull that knot. A little tighter it's about as tight as I'm gonna get at that it's a little bit loose I wasn't watching what I was doing maybe I can tighten it up a little 
go under this one. My needle in there. Go under that one, pull it tight, and come under this one. And pull it tight. And that's going to be tight. Let's go back under here. And through the loop. Pulling tight. Whoops. I dropped my needle. I never get my knots tight enough, but that's, I tightened it up a little bit more. That's pretty good. I'm happy with it. I'm happy. Now, I do think I'll come in after I'm done binding it and put a little dot of glossy accent on there so it won't work loose. And I'm going to leave a tail on each one of these if I want to put. And I'll show you what I have here. I think I have enough of them. I have these little, little, oops, that's a wreath. That goes to my, I, I have a, a loose one. I have one, a loose one too. But I have, I have four on here and I've got four signatures I'm going to put them on the well of course I'm getting my threads all tangled and I'll probably put them you know a little bit closer up so that they they dangle down maybe right around or I could have them come down past I don't know about that you know just have a little dangle in there I've got one of these that's fallen off of the string someplace over here. Could have fallen on the floor. All right, so that one's done. Uh, let's cut this a little bit more. Maybe right about there. Okay, let's figure out the next one. And I think I'm going to leave one. So it, it will open this way. I'm going to have to straighten out that score line. It'll open this way. Go to the next signature over here. I want to make sure it's like I want it. This is the middle. And it is. Exactly like I want it. But we're going to leave a mount. We're going to leave a valley here. In the middle. So if I want to put another one in sometime, and that'll just give it some more expandability. So we're going to leave that one, and let's look at this again. That's not it. Where is it? Here. So I think... Yeah, that's right. This will be the bottom here. But I actually made, made it the top, I think, on my mark. Because I'm going to turn this around when I'm done. These line up this way. So, I'm leaving that valley and I'm coming in here. And if it's not exact, I'm actually, this should be a B instead of a T. Let's make that a B. B, that was easy enough. <laughs> because this is, this is going to be the bottom and that little white mark on here. I'm going to deal with that somehow. 
either cut that off or ink it in. Okay, I'm leaving that valley. I'm coming here. I'm leaving a center valley there, if in case I ever want to put anything else in there. So let's go through these. That's pretty close to the edge. And you get a, a nice hole in there. And the center one. This is simple pamphlet binding, but Mary will take simple any day. And I actually am getting better at it. And Rosemary only did two. I'm doing three because I think I need three for my signatures. Yeah, it's coming through. And I'm only doing four signatures. But I'm talking about three, three holes. All right, now I want to come in. I find if I, after I poke my holes, if I turn it over and go back through, my needle finds it easier. That one, this one. And this one. That's good. And we need a signature. And I might have to trim these pages a little. We'll see. And it's going to go this way. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'll have to trim these a little. We'll see how far they poke out. So it goes in this way. And open it up to the center. Now let's find the center. Here. Do I have five? No, that's not the center. This is. So, one, two. Let's move that one a little more to the center. Three. One, two. Maybe I'll move that back down so that hole can catch it. Three, four, five. Now, Rosemary used her origami papers as pages, but I'm too stingy to do that. Um, she, she has more origami paper than I do. <laughs> so I have to be a little conservative with how I use it. Because I want to put art on my pages and I don't want to art over my origami. Of course, you could not art on those. You could just... Okay, the bottom goes here. However, I have to match it up with my... Because my signature is shorter than my book. So I have to push this over and match this up with the edge of the book here and it's pretty good so right there I'll have this much left over Ooh, that doesn't look like much it's it needs to be hold it I got this wrong let's put it in there This seems like the bigger side to me. Wait, let's, let's just do it, Mary. Just stay with the program, Mary. 
that looks about right. This needs to be moved up a little, though. All right. Now that looks right. We'll do it this way because I'm sure that's how I did the others. But I thought all this white space was down here. Let's match this up in the center here. Let's see what I did over here. That's what I did. So let's just keep going. sure it matches up. Don't change it now. You'll mess it up. Uh, I should start with the center one maybe. This one. Yeah, Ann Lar has a group on Facebook and uh, she does a craft and chat room at 10 o'clock. Several of us go in there. We're becoming regulars. And you're sure welcome to join us because we have a lot of fun in there. And Anne has a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> uh, and uh, come join us. You have to join Anne's group. And I would just look for Anne Lar. Maybe is Eileen here? Can you drop a link to Anne's Facebook group? So if anybody wants to join, they can. Thank you, Arlene. I appreciate my moderators because, look, my hands are busy. And my mods are really good about dropping links to channels and groups and information. Can I tell you how much I appreciate you mods? I do appreciate it. Okay, let's open these holes up a bit more here. So, like, my needle, if I open up these holes, my needle goes through a lot easier. This one's having an issue. Where is it at? Right here. And then I do like to turn this over and go through the back again. It just seems like my needle, my needle does what I'm doing here. It doesn't find it. Let's find it in here again. But if I go through it from the back to the front again and open up that hole, my needle has an easier time when I'm binding. Um, let's do this one. I've only got one more signature after this. Oh, I guess we can try to put the cover on this morning. And then I'll be able to... Well, I've got the other extension page to make. And that's the sheet that's on my desk, I'll have to paint it. Okay, but you can put those in at any time. So this goes right in here. So I'm gonna thread my needle now. Let's just set this like this. 
and my all there, this there, and let's measure out the thread just a little past the sides of the journal, right about there. I have plenty of thread left over. One, two, and three. And, oh, we don't want to clip it yet. We want to double it. We want to double it so that... And that's more than enough thread. I'll be cutting us off of this. Uh, I double my thread because I... I uh, it's just thread. It's crochet thread. It's a pretty strong thread. But two threads are stronger than one. Thread my needle. And when you're threading a needle, if you have something white or light behind your eye of the needle, and most needles, and I'm not that sensitive to it, but most needles have a back and a front. Now, I don't know if these particular needles do because these look about the same but embroidery needles have a back and a front and these look about the same to me where it's actually easier for the thread to go through one side than the other and if you hold your thread now this is double thread but if you hold your thread way down at the at the tip there and just poke it through. Got to get two of them through this one. And pull it through. But having that paper, a white paper behind, helps you see the eye of the needle more than if you have a darker background. It, it shows the white behind it. I learned that from a, a needle working. She wasn't a teacher, but she could have been. She taught me. Gosh, I must have been... 30 years old before I learned learned how to thread my needle the right way. <laughs> All right, got to find the center here. I'll probably have to poke those holes again just to make sure that they're all even. Because I, I just, you know, she was saying in, in our, well, we had a get-together, and she was telling us that there is a proper way to thread your needle. That works really good every time. And uh, I'm going, oh, what is that? Because <laughs> I, you know, I don't learn proper ways. <laughs> and uh, and so she she pulled me aside and she, she taught me how to thread my needle. And I've always appreciated that now because I don't have much trouble threading needles. If I have trouble threading a needle, it's either because the... <laughs> the thread's too big for the needle or the needle's eye is too small for the thread. That's usually what happens to me when I'm threading my needles. I It's more that I'm not using the right threads. All right, got our loop there. Let's just hold on to it and come back through this one. And, oops, let's go through the... Well, that's not working. It's getting too heavy on one side for me. There we go. I don't want this to fall through. And it'll work itself. It'll work itself. I think I had it more like this. Hold it. Yeah, because my white end was there. All right, now we want to put it through that loop and pull it tight. And I didn't get that other one as tight. And yeah, this, well, this one seems, well, we'll just keep going. This seems about even with the others. I'm not going to change my program now. 
Yeah. Seems like I, I'm going, getting longer and longer and longer here. I don't know why. These seem even, but I seem to grow longer down here. Isn't that interesting? Why am I doing that? Just by a little. Just by a little, it seems to be growing longer. Just by a teeny bit. Maybe about an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to worry about it. But I notice it. Okay. Now here's where I need to pull it tight. Pull it tight, Mary. That's pretty tight. under and through and pull this tight. There we go. That's as tight as I can make it. I'm not good at tightening my knots. But that's pretty good. If you don't tighten your knots, your signature will be wobbly. And yes, I have wobbly, wobbly signatures. Let me finish this one and I'll come out and look at chat. And then we just have one more to put in. Yay! Now I'm going to go back under this one. And I'm going to put a little bit of glossy accents on the center of these. I probably wouldn't have to, but since I turn these pages a lot. There we go. And, of course, I've got a lot of thread. I knew I had it would have a lot. And let's clip it. Here, I could actually save this for my clusters. Okay, let me come out and look at chat. I just have one more to go here. It seems like this signature is is down further. How does it look in here? I think it's going to be fine. I've got that valley in there. They match up pretty good. One more here. Got my page bent. They match up pretty good. Here. A little bit. I feel like I'm going down just a little. But I do think this one, when you look at this one, it seems like it's coming down. Maybe this one was longer. Maybe the signature is actually cut just a little bit longer. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's come out and look at chat. Well, there's Popo. Hi, Popo. Good morning. Popo was in Rose, Popo Mods for Rosemary. And boy, those two are fun to listen to. Those two are fun to listen to. I enjoy the streams, Popo. I don't make it to all of them. Tonight we're going to a veterans program. So I won't be in it tonight. But I try to catch up. And even though I won't get to the Egyptian sarcophagus caboodle um, this month. Because I want to finish this Asian caboodle. I, I do 
enjoy listening to the streams and it was so interesting to listen to Rosemary last night telling about the gilding process and then then she got out her corn husks and she was doing transfers on corn husks oh my goodness I should have saved some corn husk out of our garden. My brother's already hauled away all the the yard waste. I I need to get out there and clean my bird my bird feeder, put it away. But um, they were saying that it's there's some parts of the country that are going to get snow. So yikes! We're not going to. I was I was worried because I'm I'm driving tonight. My brother's going to have cataract surgery next week and. And we were talking about it last night, and uh, he doesn't like to drive at night. It gets dark. We have to be there at 7, and it's already dark at 7 now. And uh, I don't like him driving at night, especially by himself now. I told him that. I said, I don't like you driving at night. And he says, well, I don't like to drive at night. The, you know, the people, he said, the people get in a hurry and they turn their lights on bright, and then they'll get right up to you, right up to your back end of your car, and you got that light glaring in your, in, you have to, you know, you turn your rear view mirror to darker, but still, I think that's rude. If you're going to get right up behind somebody like that, turn your lights on dim. <laughs> so, but I'm going to drive tonight. I said, you're going to have eye surgery next week. Why don't you just let me drive? So he he agreed to that. So, and then I heard him talking about the snowstorm and go, oh no, I'm gonna have to drive in a snowstorm. <laughs> They're gonna. My daughter's school is gonna honor the veterans with a program tonight. So, we're gonna go. Hi Sylvia. Good morning Sylvia. Hi Carol. Good morning Carol. Hi Riri. Good morning. Anne said, that's what I figured. Heck no, Anne. Thank goodness, Arlene. <laughs> Popo says, thank goodness, Arlene. And then in the next comment, she says, heck no, Anne. <laughs> and then in the next comment, she says, hey, Mitzi. <laughs> Do you get Veterans Day off, Anne asks. And Popo says, heck no. <laughs> It is a federal holiday, though. You would isn't Veterans Day a federal holiday? You would think you would get it off. There's no mail today. But Popo's Popo is an in-demand employee. She's been there so long she could practically probably run the company herself, huh, Popo? Popo was talking about what were you talking about? Oh, a load of copper. A load of copper she's getting in and and uh, our, uh, Rosemary here I'm telling you guys all about the chat and Rosemary's but Rosemary says why do you need a load of copper and Popo says to put in the paint of course <laughs> oh dear Arlene says Susan you miss seeing Mary with a handsaw and some new needles yeah, I got me, Popo, these are not sharp needles. You don't have to run. I got me some weaving needles. And I was so surprised that they had them at Hobby Lobby the other day. This is a blunt needle. These are blunt. These are rounded off with a little slot at the end. This one's a little sharper, but it's got a, it's got that little foot curved up at the end like this one. And I suppose you could use this one as a weaving needle. I never paid attention to that. I didn't know that we that the weaving needles had... Well, these don't. Well, this one does. This one has a little bent point. This one's got a straight point. This cost me $5, but they did have one there, and I did buy it because I thought I'd probably lose one. I don't think I can poke these in Penelope, though. I don't think these will poke in, so... I'll have to make me a little case for my weaving needles. But I was surprised that Hobby Lobby carried them. There they were. I was going to order them off of Amazon, but if I could put my hands on them right away, I, I did. 
Let's see. What else is going on here? Susan feels like it should be. Popo says, thanks, Ann. I thought it was Friday. Yeah, it feels like Friday, doesn't it? Yes, it does. They're saying hello to Popo. Popo come in and say, and there's Becky. Becky says, ugh. <laughs> Hoping it will be okay as I've been waiting on the colored ink to print some things off. She says, hoping the ink is protected enough in its packaging. Let's see. Let's go up to where Aunt Beck came in. She says, ugh. Scott was looking for the ink for the color printer as Amazon said it had been delivered. We checked on the front and side door. Scott pulled out to leave. And there was the package on the ground next to the mailbox. The package was wet. I have a hard time threading any needles, Arlene says. I can't see the eye. Well, make sure you have something white behind your needle. Because if you have something white behind the needle versus, versus something colored, it's a lot harder to see, and this is even gold, and it's harder to see. I can still see the eye um, here, this. It's, it's harder to see if there's something darkest behind your needle than if you have something white. And that will help, but, it, you know, if, if you need glasses or magnifying glasses and all of that, I certainly understand. I learned that from my needleworking friends. All right, let's see what else is going on. Hudson says embroidery needles. Hudson says, I never knew that about embroidery. Oh, about the needle, about the threading the eye of the needle. And if you get your threads, now I use a double thread and this is a little bit thicker thread, but um, hold your thread as as close to the as close here it gives you a little bit more control you know you have a little bit more control over that wobbly and or if you have it like that it kind of gets wobbly as you're going through the eye of the needle so hold it close and have something white this this is enough for me i don't need that white piece and on the eye of the needle, I don't notice it on these so much. Uh, these look the same on both sides to me. But, uh, but on embroidery needles, there is a front and a back to the needle. And you need to get into the front. And usually, see this has a little dent here. Right there, it has a little dent in my needle. You probably can't see it. But that has that on this needle, it has it on both sides. But I think on the embroidery needles, your little dent will only be on one side. And it's a little more, um, it's a little bit more open on one side than the other. There's a front and the back to the needle. And if you get your, your thread, your little fingers right up to the eye of the needle, you can just put it right. So I'm lying to you here. You can just put it right in. And it should just go right in. And then, see, I, I slid it right in. And I still have my I still have my fingers on it. And you can just pull it through. Now, I've seen some people, and I can't do it. I've seen some people take their, their thread and they kind of slip it in. Kind of slip it in. I can't do it. They, they just slide their, th their thread through the eye of the needle, something like that. I, I haven't learned how to do that. So I'm not even going to attempt it here. I've watched some people do that and go, how did they do that? <laughs> this needle, I've used it so much it's getting a curve here. This needle's getting a little a little curved. You know, because I, you know. So, it's not a straight needle anymore. Oh, what else is going on out there? I hope your ink works fine. Mary, I never knew that about embroidery. Sylvia's here. Let's see, Arlene says, I linked her group above. 
I'll do it again. Thank you, Arlene, for dropping links. I appreciate that. Good morning, Sylvia. Carol is here. Brenda D. Good morning, Brenda D. Becky's here. Hi, Becky. Becky, last night, yesterday afternoon, I was watching Becky, and she was working on her, I think when I bopped in, she was working on her no mo joe journal and she was doing the prompt texture and then what else did you do she was talking about all the different hashtags that we have going out there uh, she had a couple i put in society of idea collector hashtag and janet put in a couple and then janet uh becky just turned her her uh camera on herself and chatted I don't know if I want to do that this morning. <laughs> Where's my camera here? Let's see how bad I look on here. Let me see how I look in my tablet. Becky said she thinks it's important to show her face every now and then. Uh, here? Wait, well, how do you switch the thing? photo I've got it on photo here oh no <laughs> I don't know if I want to show my face at four o'clock in the morning Becky we're not going to do that I look tired let's get rid of this let me out of here how do I get out here yeah let me come back into chat i look tired becky had all morning to wake up <laughs> I, I have to wear my eyeglasses because i can't see the chat if i don't wear my eyeglasses oh becky said i'm going to have to work out a feeding schedule because Sally can't have any of the other cat food. Not even a drop. Oh, Greg has to buy special food at $65 a month. Sally finally gave me a sample. One of the Greg's cats. Uh, I have a little beeswax block that I use for embroidery thread. Uh, Arlene is talking about waxing the thread. You can buy little blocks of of wax. Usually they come in a little plastic case and they'll have little notches on the plastic case at each end, little notch. And then you just hold on to your thread at one end and then just you can do it a couple times and you'll wax your thread. I don't wax my threads. I probably should, but I don't. Let's see. Becky said, we have to make a quick trip to the vets this morning before crafting chat. I'm going to craft and chat. I'm going to saw on my, my, my frame loom. I'm going to get that middle board out, and I'm going to carve erasers. Carla, there's Carla. Good morning, Carla. I'm moving on up the chat here. Becky said a train was going through. The printer fabric is fun, Becky says, but it can't be used on anything that will be washed. Nancy says, I found a package of inkjet fabric printing paper. Mary says, use it up. So I printed photos of the women in my family back to my great grandmothers. <gasps> oh, wow fabric printing paper they will be added to old linens to make the book oh nancy what a great idea and you won't have to wash your book <laughs> oh that's neat nancy oh wow i love that i was showing pictures of my grandmothers the other morning do i have them up here let me see if i have them here um i expanded them 
so they're kind of grainy because they were just old photos, you know, old cabinet cards. The one of my mother's, this is my mother's mother. This is my grandmother her on her wedding day. And of course, you know, she's standing behind my grandfather. They actually got married in the little town about eight miles east of us. But this is her wedding photo, and I expanded it so I would have her face. But as you expand an old photo, it does. I mean, I took a picture of it, and then I enlarged the picture so I could get a headshot of her. So that's my grandmother, and this is my great grandmother. And boy, look at the look at the difference in the photography. And of course, this is really grainy. This was off of a cabinet card too. But at least I know what she looked like. Um, they both have straight, and her eyes are kind of, I'm sure that's the photography. I'm sure her eyes were not that starey. Her eyes were probably softer like her, her daughter's. But because of the photography at the time, I mean, this was probably taken 30 years before this. And I have one of my mother, but it's in the journal over there. And then this is on my dad's side. This is my grandfather. This is my dad's dad. And this is my grandmother here. And there's a story. They ha This was in, my brother has this original. And see, this was a print taken off of it, off of a picture taken of the big, big oval frame, big oval, oval frame. But there's a story and about this original photograph in the frame, my grandfather was cleaning his gun. He was cleaning his gun and it was loaded and it went off. And you can see in the photo, it shot him right through the forehead in the photograph. It didn't shoot him in real life, but thank goodness it was pointed the other way. <laughs> It shot him, it, it shot the picture and it shot him right in the photo, photograph. And my brother has, my brother has this picture in the original frame. And boy, it would be fun to gild that frame, wouldn't it? My brother would not let me touch it. <laughs> but it'd be fun to gild that frame. I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't gilded. Because this isn't, I don't know. I haven't, haven't seen the original of this picture for ages uh, but I'm I'm thankful to have this of my grandmother and grandfather my grandfather died at a pretty early age I don't know what what he it was probably some sort of cancer I don't know uh, I never learned what he died of but he died I mean he didn't live to be an old man my grandmother I remember my grandmother from from being a little girl. And actually my name, um, my her name was Ollie. They called her Ollie. So I imagine her first name was Olive. They called her Ollie. And she wanted, I think her middle name was Mary. I don't know. She wanted my mother to name me Mary. And M-A-R-Y. <clears throat> my mother wanted a more unique name. So she was in the hospital and I got the name Mary Dale, M-E-R-I-D-E-L. And that made my, that made Grandma Ollie happy that I at least had the sound of Mary in my name. <laughs> and my middle name is also named, her middle name was Leona. And my name, my little name is Leona. So I'm kind of, I kind of have, I'm kind of named after in a sense, off of my dad's mother. She was happy. But I remember crawling up in her lap when I was a little girl. She she died when I was a senior in high school. And I worked at a local nursing home my junior, junior and senior years in high school. I worked at the local nursing home, and I bought me this little 1957 Chevy. And, of course, it was a used car then. It wasn't a brand new. But I, I worked at the local nursing home, and I bought that 57 Chevy as a school car. And I drove it all around. I drove it to work. And, of course, the, the nursing home that I worked at was run by Mennonites, and it was out in the country. It was about three miles from where we lived. 
I would come out and I'd go, zoot, 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 zoot. <laughs> and I'd be at the nursing home. And so my parents trusted me to drive that car. And of course, kids drive their cars now all the time, but back then it was a trust thing. Can Mary drive that car? And then I got to driving it in my senior year. I got to driving that car to school in the mornings because I didn't like taking the bus. I never could make that silly bus. It always had a weight on me <laughs> early in the morning. Now, it's funny. I could make it now that I'm up at 430 in the morning now. But boy, try to get me a, on a on a 745 bus when I was a senior senior in high school. Uh uh. So, uh, I my senior year in high school, I drove that '57 Chevy to to school in the morning. Well, that's the year that my grandmother passed away. I was a senior, and my dad drove my school car down to Oklahoma, and it never came back. My dad came back, but my car never—I don't know. He left it down there someplace along the along, well, probably in some small town. He never even paid me for it. <laughs> My poor dad. He never even paid me for it. Well, of course, he probably figured, I gave you a roof over your head and I fed you. That's payment enough. So, and that was the last school car I had till I was a senior in college. And I did not, well, I was out of college, really. I was out of business school then. And I bought a used car. I bought this little Valiant. And it had a, it was an old used car. It was like a 1963 Valiant, V-A-L. It was a little, it was a really a cool little car. And uh, uh, I drove it all around Lincoln. <laughs> and I had a white Dodge. That, I was always buying these old older cars because that's all I could afford back then. Until I got... Gosh, I was out working a, in a as a programmer or in the computers before I bought my first. I was a programmer. My first programming job. I bought my first brand new car, and there's a story behind that too. <laughs> I won't tell it. And then, then I've had three or four new cars since then. And but my last car that I bought was a used one again. Then my minivan. And it was used, but it was a it was a model car that they let test drive. And I think it had sixteen thousand miles on it, or maybe it was twenty five thousand miles. It was used, but I'm still driving it. I I've only got a hundred and ten thousand miles on that car, and if you subtract twenty five thousand, I've uh, I've haven't put a hundred thousand of my own miles on that car yet. Of course, here, here I don't have to drive much, maybe once or twice a week at the most. All right, let me go down to the bottom of the chat. Arlene, Arlene says, I have an old family name. When I was younger, I didn't like it, but now I love it. People have gotten away from carrying on old family names. My family tree is loaded with Arlene and Francis. Aw, aw, I like that, Arlene. Aunt Beck says, my first car was a 73 Ford Maverick. Very cool. Was that a new one or a used one, Becky? My youngest daughter named her girls with those family names. Aw. It was a used car. Yeah, that's all I could afford back then were the used cars. And then back then, a used school car only cost you 50 or $7,500. They were not expensive. A used car now is almost <laughs> as expensive as a new car was back then. Uh, of course, with the current economy situation, used cars are getting harder and harder to find. Excuse me, I had a sip of tea. Paid $1,600 for that car? Wow. That must not have had a lot of miles on it. 
my used cars probably cost me between 50 and 100, 150 up and then. But they were older cars. They were at least 10 or 12 years old. That little Valiant was 11, 12 years old before I got it. Right now, the worst time is the worst time to buy any car. Yeah, I agree. And I'm thankful for my car. Um, it, I, I took my brother up to the VA the other day. Why did I drive? I had to drive because of one, some reason I had to drive. I can't remember because all he did was the physical and the, but I drove my car and he was in the rider seat and we stopped at Walmart and he doesn't like walking all around in Walmart and Walmart, I'm going to put it this way so it'll be right side up. My butterflies will be on the back, but they'll be flying up instead of down. Um, he doesn't like walking. My brother doesn't like walking all around in Walmart. And so he said, I'm going out in the car and wait for you. He says, I'm going to go have a cigarette. Well, he doesn't have a cigarette in my car. He he has a cigarette and he stands outside and he doesn't smoke in my car because I don't like him to. I My ashtray is full of change. Not a lot, but it has change in it. And uh, anyway, when I came out there, he was... At the left side of my car in the front. And I noticed he was looking uh, looking at the fender. And I didn't think too much of it. I thought, oh, he's just standing out there having his cigarette. And, you know, we just went about our day. And about the time I got down here to our little town. And we came home. And I was just about crossing the railroad tracks down in the center of our little town. And... He said, what did you do to your front fender? And I said, huh? <laughs> I didn't do anything to it. I said, what happened? He said, well, it's all cracked and uh, the light is out of it. And I'm going, oh, no. I didn't do anything to it. Somebody must have backed into it or something. And so when we came in here and parked, I got out and looked at it, and it's just the parking light. My headlight is okay. My blinkers are okay. But my parking light is completely gone. And the fender is not dented or anything, but it's got a crack in it down the, down the side about a foot from the end. So somebody must have, I, I said, I didn't do that, honest. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. I don't know if, because I park it out on the street. I don't know if somebody backed into it. We had those roofers here. It could have been a, uh, you know, it could have been anything going on. It may not have even happened here. It could have happened at a parking lot. But I can't figure out how it would have gotten the parking light, which is kind of on the bottom light, and not, if somebody bumped into it, you think they would have crashed the blinker and the headlight and dented up the, I mean, you would think that the entire front end would, I mean, the front side would be broken. But he just had a crack down the side. So I don't think that I'm going to have to, fix it in order unless I want to fix it I don't think I'll get a ticket for a missing parking light I don't know that for sure but uh, the blinker works fine and the headlight works fine it's just the parking lot and I sure don't want to pay $800 for a new fender and parking lot like because that's probably what it had cost me so I'm just driving it with no parking lot light on the right hand front I don't think that I'll get picked up for that you can't see the park lady <laughs> I'm not such a great parallel parker I get in there fine 
Uh, I had a parallel park the other day at the thrift store. And I can get in there fine, you know, because I know you come in at an angle and go that way. But I don't go in far enough when I'm doing my angle. I don't go close enough to the curb. So after I get out, there's always a couple of feet between my car and the sidewalk. <laughs> but but it's my car is small enough that it's not sticking way out in traffic. I haven't learned to get I guess I'm afraid I'm I'm afraid I'm going to hit the car behind me. Uh, I don't I just I'm I'm wary. I don't want to dent up anybody else's car. I'm a pretty careful driver. So I would rather leave 2 feet behind me than cause a, a big stir with somebody else's car. <laughs> I was laughing at it the other day when I went to the thrift store. I go, there's that two feet again between me and the sidewalk. Somebody could walk there if they had to. <laughs> but it's a, you know, it's a relatively small town. I'd be in the store and out before anybody could ticket me. Unless they just happen to see it. And I don't think I don't think they take the time to check meters and everything. I don't even think they have meters anymore in that town, come to think of it. I think they got rid of all the parking meters. They used to have parking meters. You used to have to have a couple of nickels and dimes and quarters when you parked. But I think they got rid of them all. Is this a small town? If your brother's handy enough, go to a junkyard, get the parts and replace them. So much cheaper that way. Yeah. Or we could probably just buy a parking light. A parking light underneath. I don't know. I don't. I, I didn't. We, neither one of us got down far enough to see how much damage the actual light has, you know, if it got the the part that holds the light. I just know it's missing. <laughs> so I don't know how much we'd have to get a hold of. I'm going to pull this one up a little. And it'll be a little wonkier, but it's not off that much. Well, maybe not that much. Right in there, maybe. Last one. And, it, you know, my car is a 2005. And I it was two years old when I got it. I got it in 2007. And it was just a, well, they said it was a tester car. But they might have, when people had accidents or something, you know, they might have might have been a loaner car too. Because I already had 25,000 miles on it. I thought it was 16, but now that I think about it, I think it was 25,000 miles that it had on it when I bought it. And I've only, I looked at the mileage the other day and it was only 110. But I don't think I need the parking light per se. Um, you know, maybe if I were in a bigger town, I might need it. Uh, but around here, yeah. Did I go back into that other one? I don't think I did. I can't remember. I'm going to go back in from the back here on both of these. And yeah, it, it's a little damage to the car, but you know, you got to expect expect it. You just have to expect it. I don't know if I'll ever get another car in my lifetime. I'm getting older. I'd rather have a new computer. If I get another car, I guarantee you it'll be a used one. 
and they're getting harder to find good used cars. But I'll bet you when the economy shapes up, people will be trading in all those older cars. But they'll probably have a lot more miles on them because people are driving them longer. People are driving them longer. So I don't know about finding, unless you find a good, a good deal out there. Even here in Nebraska, you drive by the car lots and there aren't a lot of cars out there. Not as many as there used to be. This is, I'm going to have to go through this one again. That's why I do this. Because if my all can't find it, my needle surely won't. There we go. I like to come through both sides. I just find that my needle, my needle finds it a little bit easier if I go through both sides. It's easier to bind it. Front and back. Here. All right, let's set this aside. And let's... Whoops, I bumped that. I probably have to straighten it out. That's pretty good. I guess I did go through this. Where is it? Right here. Last one. All right, let's see. Let's find the center of this again. And let's straighten these out. Make sure that they're all will go through. And that goes here. All right, and I need to thread my needle. One, two, three. Yeah, I'll be in Anne's crafting chat today. And I'm going to work right here from my desk. I'm going to carve erasers and saw my frame loom. I probably won't warp it. I might, well, when you warp it, when you start warping that frame loom, you've got to finish it. Because Lisa was showing how, you know, you have, a, you have to get your threads tight. And so if I quit and let it go like that, well, my threads won't be tight. So I'll probably just saw the centerpiece off. Maybe I'll glue the... Glue the... pattern down on the inside whoops I didn't get that one through a double thread a double thread is a little bit harder to do than a single thread my eye needs to be a little bigger yeah my eye needs to be bigger all right so we're going to go down through the center and down through Whoops, I didn't pull that one out. Down through the center. Hold on to it. And down through the center of my book. And this is the last one, so it gets a little wonky here. A little bit harder when all those signatures are in there. I see what Rosemary was saying with the leave the cover off till you have it all bound, because it gets a little wonky. Through the center there, let's make sure I'm in. Yeah, I am. It gets a little hard to handle once it has four or five signatures in it. 
loop it through, pull it tight. That's pretty good. Go through the center of this one. Yeah. Where's the... Through the center of the signature and through the book. Down through that. I don't know. It seems like they they wiggle their way down. And back in. Where is it at? I didn't go in. Where's the center? Did I pass it? There it is. Wrong one. Wrong signature? No. What am I doing wrong here? My needle's through. Yeah. It's through there. Oh, let's pull it through. What, where's it going? There. It has to go in. And where's the center? That's not it. One more. I'm having trouble with that one. Let's just pull that through. And then come through this one. It's not going through. Why aren't you going in there? There it is. That one is a little stubborn on me. How does that look over here? That one was more even with the one before it. All right. Pull it tight. That's pretty tight. Tightening it is my challenge because I, 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 uh, they, they loosen up on me. I don't keep a tight grip on them. And let's go back under this thread and through the loop, holding it tight. Hold it tight until you get down there. There we go. That's pretty tight. Fairly tight. Tight enough. But I like to go under again. Pull. And this is the last signature. Go anymore. There we go. And let's clip my thread. We'll save that one too. Okay. So that's really the last signature, I think. So it crunches up. Now, because I've got a valley in here, until I get it bound, it's going to be a little wonky in that center piece, but there it is. Let's get it more like this. I got some extra mountains at the end, which is okay with me, because if I want to put anything in there, I got that extra piece in there, that extra... Now, 
that extra valley wants to pop out. There we go. But it seems like I haven't mastered the art of getting these lines straight. They're just a little bit off, but I'm not that unhappy with them. So this is going to be my front signature here. So, where's my front cover? If I understand Rosemary, this goes in here, or maybe in here. And I might have to glue that down a little. It depends. She talked about leaving a pocket, but this is not scored straight. I probably scored it on the scoreboard and it my my uh, score went wonky. Let's put my needle away. Where's Penelope? So I am going to see if I can't straighten out that score a little. Oh, what happened to my plastic ruler? I like these metal rulers, but they're hard to see with the light shining. And I don't see my plastic one in there. Where did it run off to? It probably fell. I'll let's use that one. So, you want to go in a half inch and an inch. And this was really my back. So I'm going to rescore this. It is the half inch is right there. Well, I'm going to go in a half inch, but this won't be a full inch. Let me mark that. Pen. I'm just going to mark it with this. Right. Right there. And so my hand gets in the light. My shadow gets in the way. Right there. And right there. And let's get my score tool out. She did say a half inch. I wonder though, because I've got a good, almost a good eighth of an inch here. If I make that score there, will there be enough? I guess there will be. Let's go ahead and stay with the program, Mary. Don't change the direction. <laughs> Don't change direction in the middle of the road, in the middle of the journey. This doesn't look straight to me. I guess it is. Don't turn around in the middle of the journey. And I'm going to leave this flap and glue it down on the front. We'll see how much I need to trim off. I might have to trim a little of that off. All right, that scored pretty good. That was really wonky in there. We're just going to leave that. That will be the one inch. This was the, this was really the end. It's going to be the front. And let's fold it back this way. And I remember I re-inked this. I have a little white showing there. It's going to hurt it. And it's got to go like that. 
And I am going to have a valley at the front of this. I'm going to leave a valley there in case I want to put another one. And where's my cover? The cover will go here. I guess I do want to trim that off a little. I'm going to... I'm going to make another little score. This is about an eighth of an inch. How thick is this? This is... I can't see. It's about an eighth of an inch in thickness here. A good eighth of an inch. And I'm going to take and put it on this, another score line, about an eighth of an inch in on this. So that this part here will take care of this, I think. I think. I'm not sure. We'll see. About, about like that. I don't think Rosemary did that on her. She's she's better at this than Mary. She's made these before. That's a little off. She's made two or three of these probably. Well, I know she's made at least two because she had a model and then she made one in front of us. So we're going to bend, make another score. Little spine a little spine area there for that cardboard to sit in. Come on. So I want this, let's fold it back again, and I'm going to have a valley at the beginning, and I want this to fit in here, like that, and that's just about perfect. Now, I think I'll trim, glue this down better, because I thought this was the back, I thought I was going to cut this off. So let me glue this down better and trim it off. And I think I'll just use wet glue. We'll see how it works. If it doesn't work, I'll go to something else. Oh, I pulled the tip right out of there. That's what happens with these, these glue pins. I don't think I can fix that. The, the tip gets caught in the cap. Well, let's just put some out on my table. It's getting pretty empty anyway. I guess maybe if I cleaned that off before I put that cap back on there, that wouldn't tend to happen as much. And I need something like this. Is this the one that Suze gave to me? I don't know. We're going to use it. Sue sent me one of these glue spreader things. Well, it's really a makeup tool, I guess, but it works to spread glue. And let's just take our towel and we're going to cut that fabric off anyway. Yeah. 
I don't know, it might be a little smeary on this side. I don't know how that's going to dry. Let's dry it and see what happens. I can ink it. I might ink it anyway. Because I wanted to ink this. ink let's cut this off I think that glue tends to put a dark line down there but I'm going to ink that anyway so I'm not unhappy with it it's not it's going to be okay I got to use the scissors sharpener Riri sent me a scissors sharpener, and I'm going to run my scissors through it. All my, my scissors. Let's save that for a cluster. Oops. Gotta trim this off better here, Mary. No, let's come at it this way then. Yeah, I think when you use a wet glue like this, I don't think, I think it will leave me a dark line, but that's okay because I'm going to put dark around there. Let's get my ink pad out. Oops, I got my frame. Oh, I need my ink pad. Ink pad. And good morning to everybody who's coming in that I miss saying good morning to. Anne is here. Sylvia Carroll had to leave. Anne says, it takes me forever to put in a link. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, the, mods, the mods do it much better than me. We're just going to ink this up at the edge. And so that dark won't matter too much and I'm gonna ink the well hold on to it Mary we're gonna ink this up here too let's cut this I like the phrase but I'm gonna ink so let's snip that off if I can a little and let's just ink it in there. And that's the other thing what this reminds me of when I was watching Rosemary last night. She was talking about gilding and she was gilding on the Looks like she used texture paste on her sarcophagus and she was gilding around the face of the Egyptian face on the sarcophagus and she was talking about how that gilding will still show little white lines and she said that's desirable. I'm going, oh good, because I don't know. But she did an awfully she she gilded those cracks in there later. She did a beautiful job, but she was talking about how desirable it was for some of the white to be showing, or the wasn't exactly white, um, the lighter to show through. She said, that's desirable, and I'm going good, because I don't know if I could do it as perfect as you do. <laughs> so if I see, if you see a little white showing through here, it's desirable. And I suppose I'll do the same thing on this side. Make that little eighth of an inch piece. Although I cut this side off a little. So I don't know. We'll have to see when I get to the back. I should probably do the measure out the back before I put the front on. Look at it. That's what I don't like about the ink pads. I get messy.
and I'm going to go ahead and ink this. I might have to re-ink it. We'll see. I don't think I'm going to cut any more off of there. And this is archival, so this will be permanent. Although I'm not going to wash this book. <laughs> and we're going to do this side too. This side has a little bit of a seam going on here just from the fabric. It's got a little bit of a seam. I needed that seam on the other side. And it's it's a little loose there. Just from me cutting it. I'm loving this caboodle, Rosemary and Popo. I'm loving how this is turning out. And I'm not into Asian art, but I tell you, I'm enjoying this one. I'm enjoying this one. I guess I'm not into Asian art for any particular reason other than I never do it. I never do it, so I'm doing it. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I want to get this one done. It'd be nice to have both of these done by, well, it'd be nice to have them done by the end of November. If I were Rosemary, they would be. But I don't know if I'll get this all embellished. I know it'll be put together. Look at my hands. Let me wash this ink off. Where's my towels? Uh, well, they're here. I'm going to have to get me a... I didn't get my towels the other day. I I got tired and came home. I needed... I get my towels at Dollar General. They're just cheap towels. But that's all I need for in here. Well, those other ones, those Christmas ones that I was using, those were not Dollar General. Those were another store, probably. But I need to make the Dollar General run. We need a new bathroom brush and we need some fragrance in the bathroom. <laughs> and uh, what else? We need some Drano. I don't know if I can get Drano at the Dollar General, but I usually go to Menards to get that or Walmart. But I'm not heading toward the Walmart store today. I'm not heading out at all today. I'm going to go to Ann's room. But I need to do a Dollar General run. All right, that's pretty good. Get that yucky ink off my hands. All right, let's take care of the back. That's the front. Let's take care of the back. So this is the front, and this is the back. So it, it'll go this way. This one will bend this way. This will bend this way. And I think I'm going to put a little score line. See, this is what I made for the front. And that's okay. We're just going to leave that on mine. But I am going to put an eighth of an inch right, right in there. So, oh, that comes pretty good, doesn't it? That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We need to do a score line in there for the... Oh, let's do that. Let's wipe this blue tool off. Sue sent me. She either sent me this one or one like this one. It reminds me of Sue's one. My hands are inky again. I suppose from handling this. All right. It has to dry, I guess. So this is the front. Let's put it over here. 
So I want to put a little eighth of an inch score line here. Let's turn it the other way. And this is all okay because I'm going to paint this side. I'm going to paint that. So I just want to score about an eighth of an inch in. And as straight as I can. Because my covers, I don't know about rosemary's, but these covers are pretty thick there. Uh. Yeah, I'm getting inky from the, probably should run a heat gun over that. But let's finish this. Come on. line too. Let's hit that ink with the hit gun. I don't know if it'll help, but it's getting my fingers all yucky. Let's hit that ink with the heat gun. Maybe that'll help dry it a little. Oh, look. It melted a little. Stop, Mary, stop. It melted it just a little there, I think. Look. Isn't that interesting? Melted it in. I'm going to go ahead and bind it, and I'll take care of that later. I mean, glue on the cover. So I'm going to glue the cover on. That's the back cover. And Rosemary used double-sided tape and glue, I believe. So that's what I'm going to do. A little bit better with the ink, but it started to melt my fabric. But I saved it. Clean my hands a little more. So, let's get out the glossy accent and the tape. We're going to put tape. I think she said she put her tape close to the score line, if I remember. But I have that inner score. I think I'll put glue on that. So, I think she said it. And I'm just going to get... I'm going to do both of them. I'm going to do two. Okay. 
but I'm going to have to pull this one off. And I'm just using Dollar Tree double-sided tape. And then another one here. And then we're going to put glossy accent in the, the spine area and then just around in here. And I found that, you know how these glossy accent have that long tip? If I cut that tip off, my pins don't get as... I cut it off to just about a fourth of an inch to the base. My pins do not stick in there as bad and I have an easier time getting them out. Let's do the the spine area and around in here. Alrighty. And do I want to spread that out? Just a little here. So it won't ooze out my on my onto my fabric. Alright, so let's put this. That's right. Right in. here and I can't see because it's in my way here right around in there right like that now that's fabric but it's got the dark ink on it And let's just press it down here. I think I'm liking it. Now I left a, a valley in here on purpose. And that will close up when we get the, the closure on it. It will close up. Right? Right. When we get the... It's a little wonky right now. When we get the closure in here on it. There, there it goes. It's a little wonky where those extra valleys are there. There. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Like that. Yay! And I'm not sure how Rosemary dealt with this, but that's how I dealt with it. So let's do the back. And also, as you work with it and get it so it finds its... It has to find its memory. So as you work with it, I notice as I fold this back and forth, it gets easier to... It gets easier to fold up. And I'm, I'm really happy with my my scoring on this one. They're nice and even. I'm happy with that. But you can see right in there, I did not put a signature so there's no red thread there. Because there's nothing in there. And there's nothing in this one. And there's nothing in this back one. 
that's for a pocket or an extra flip page or something in there. If I put something in there, it'll just be a single page, maybe folded in half. It won't be an entire signature. Maybe that's how I'll deal with the origami paper. I'm not sure. Let's do the back one. So I want to make sure I have my back on straight like this. So and it will come in there and fold up that way. Yeah. Little bit, a little bit dirty on that ink, but not as bad as it was before. My hands feel grimy. Let's put some... One thing for sure, I sure do sanitize my hands. Get my fingernails. Fingertips. Feel grimy. Throw that towel away now. Woo! Uh oh, retry. I did you guys buffer? I had to get my thread going again. My chat going. My chat went out. Arlene is tired. She had to leave. I understand perfectly. I understand, Arlene. Have a good rest. Hi, Bootsy. Homemade waffles are the best, he says. Yum. Are you having homemade waffles today, Bootsy? How is your old Fart Tuesday going? How did that go yesterday? Or the other day? Was it Tuesday or Wednesday? They had an old Fart in the Park day. Thursday pancake breakfast with Mary and her atillettes. What could be better? I don't know, Roy. Can't think of a thing. Hope all is well. Group hello and a virtual group hug to all you left, lovely crafters and artists. That's quite a good morning, Roy. <laughs> good morning, Roy. Sylvia says good morning. Riri says hello to you too. Ann Lar says sleep well, Arlene, and thank you for all your help. Yes. Arlene's, Arlene is up late at night, and then she'll nap in the morning, and then she'll get up and do some other stuff, and she's ready to go again in the evening at night. Let's see, Becky's here. Becky says, hi, Mina. Mina says, good morning. Hi, Mina. Welcome, welcome, Mina. I'm... I'm binding my I'm binding my Asian caboodle this morning. I sewed in the signatures. I need to make sure my dragonfly is pointed the right way. Now we need to put some Here's my needle. Make sure the little opening is working. I'll get that excess glue off of the top of my bottle here. Usually comes off pretty easy. All right. So we want to put some glue down the the spine where the edge of the Backing will go, whoops, down that little center part, and some glue over the edge here, and just kind of dot it on my tape there. And I am going to kind of spread it out a little because I don't want it to leak over onto my fabric. Okay. 
I don't know if that's completely necessary. Okay. Make sure this is pointed the right way. And it is. So I want it to go right in there. Do I have that straight? It's hard to see. <sighs> I don't have it straight. Let's put some more glue on this. Hard to do that back one, I think. I might, I don't know, that last inch in there. We'll see after I get it on. That last inch. I guess it's a, a mountain. And that has to come there. Now, I don't know if I want to glue that down or not. We're going to leave it for now. And see if I can't get this folded up right. And after it finds its, finds its way here, I think it'll be fine. This one, I might have an extra, but that is an inch and a half, but I made that spine in there. This one went pretty good. I'm going to start from this side. It needs to find its memory. And my other one did this, too. It seems to want to pull in. But after you get that closure on there, it tightens it up. This, this is not going straight for me. I think I'm going to have to glue that down so that I can do the... This, this part here is not working for me. Almost too many signatures in there. I think Rosemary only did three. I had to put in four. I was going for six. I'm sure glad I took some out. Now it's maybe if I clip these together here. Let's put a clip in there. Maybe that'll help hold them. so that they don't wonky out. For now, until I get the closure on there. There. These front ones are the ones that are causing me the the front and back empty ones. There we go. The empty ones are causing my issues. There. There! Now after I get the closures on here, it'll hold that tight like this. Right now it's going to be kind of wonky. Oh, I'm loving this. Uh, this one seems to be 
out further. I'm not sure about this back one. I'm not sure. It seems to... It's hard to tell until I get it bound. Let's put it like this and clip it together if I can. Now, let's see how this goes. Help it find its memory here. This back one, I'm not sure about it. It needs to go, well, for one thing, the spine isn't getting glued down there. But I get it going, and then this one pops out. <laughs> I get one in, and the other one pops out. Don't do that. It's the empty ones. It's the empty ones that are giving me the issue. And I know, I know once I get it, the closure on there, I know it'll be fine. It's just making it close while it's still not, doesn't have its closure on it. I know it works. I know my scores are good. I'm not too sure about this last one here. It acts a little weird. See, it when I push this one in, that one pops out. And when I push that one in, this one pops out. But I think it's just because I don't have... I'm not sure that last one is going to work for me. I might cut it off a little. I might cut it off a little. No, I'm not sure about it. It looks right because there's an inch. Well, really, I've got I've got an extra. I think I need to cut this off a little. So let's. It won't hurt to take it off. I don't think. Where's my palette knife? Let me grab a palette knife. In here. Line up. I saw them in here. Here's one. Let's work this back one off. I think I'm gonna have to redo my back. And it won't hurt if I if I get it off of there, I'll just repaint it, but it's gonna cover it up again, I think. It's pulling a little of it off, but it'll be okay because I'll recover it. I think I have too much. I think I have too much. And I'm going to cut a little of this off. Well, it pulled the paper off of that. I have to repair that if I use it. Don't worry, I'll get out of this mess somehow. I But it's not folding up straight for me. I think I've got too much space in there. I'm going to have to either cut that off or use it. Repair this. But whatever, this will come back over that. I've got to figure out this back one. So it's it's good to hear. And then it needs an inch. And that's what I did. I did an inch. Maybe if I cut one of these off, use this, cut cut it off there. I think I got too much. It looks good when I fold it this way. It looks good, but it doesn't. 
it doesn't crunch up very good. It's these empty ones that cause my issue. I need a bobby pin. <laughs> I need a bobby pin or two. <laughs> I need a bobby pin to hold that. Hold on to that for me, would you? Thank you. Oh, that works good. Let's put a bobby pin on these too. <laughs> bobby pins. Bobby pins come in handy sometimes. Yes, they do. They make good clips. All right, so this goes this way. That way, that way, that way. Now, I think I'm going to take one of these mountains because I've got two valleys here. I've got a valley there and a valley there. I'm going to take one of these valleys off. I don't want two valleys. But in order to do that, I gotta make sure. Let's let's bobby pin this one. Let's put bobby pins on them to hold them. We could even put bobby pins on these. It just helps hold the journal together while I'm working with it. Let's put some bobby pins in here. Whoops, that's not a good one. Let's put it where? Right here. Don't tell me that I shouldn't be using my bobby pins. I like my bobby pins. That kind of kind of holds it, but not too good. Let's see. Let's put it like that. That's the way that goes. This comes this way, that way, that way. Just like that. Just like that. So these are all good. It's this back one that's giving me the trouble. I'm pretty good with these. The center, these center valleys, because they're empty, they're a little more wonky. Let's put a bobby pin on the other side of them too. Let's see. Which one is it? This one and this one. Let's put a bobby pin here to help hold them closed. The open, the open mountains don't want to hold closed. The signatures kind of hold the others closed. At least until I get it bound. Let's put one there. There. That's good. Well, almost good. Like so. Like. Did I get that bobby pin on the wrong one? No, that's right. Has to go in there. Like that. It needs to find its memory. You know, the more you fold it and open it, it will find its memory and fold at those points where it needs to close. That's pretty good. This open one. Of course, now I got the bobby pin in there now. But now, if I cut one off the back, What I want, boy, this back is really, I'm tempted to cut that whole thing off. But if I do that, what will I have? I think it'll be okay, because I'll have this one and this one. 
and I'm going to cut this piece off. I'm going to shorten this up. It's messy anyway. So we're going to cut it right. We're going to leave that part that we used for the spine because that was an eighth of an inch in. All right, so that will make this will fold here a half of an inch in like that. Let's score it. And that will go on the outside of the cover. Well, yeah. Where's my score tool? What happened to my score tool? There it is. And then this spine, make sure I have it the right way, will come right here. And this will go back onto this. And I might have to take care of that with some, let's take care of this now. Uh, maybe I can get that off. That's just extra. Where's my... That's the cardboard that came off because I glued it down good. I don't know if I can get this off. It doesn't matter. It, it will be covered up. It was this part that wasn't getting covered. Okay, let's try this again. This will go down in here a half of an inch in. I might take a gold pen and fix that. Oh. Now let's bend it the other way. Bends this way really good. This way, not so much. All right, so this will come in here just like that. I'm going to see if I can't get more of that off. That cover isn't going as smooth as the front did. But I think I had too many, I had too many 
mountain. So I've still got, a, I've got two valleys here. One valley and a valley at the end. Because, yeah. I guess you don't want to put a lot of valleys in here. <laughs> so we're going to glue this back on and cut a little of this gilded area here. Where's my palette knife? Let's see if I can't get a little of that out of there. I might have to touch this whole area up, make it prettier. So it goes on, I think it goes on fine, but will it fold up fine? That's another story. I think I needed more than a half inch. Three fourths of an inch would have been better for me. All right. Let's do it. Whatever it is, it is. This can go for a cluster. We'll put the cluster in it. All right. We're going to put tape here. And here. Riri says, I thought that might be the case. Mina says, I'm thinking waffles, Roy. Waffles. I have a witness for weakness for them. We have a waffle maker. We have well the last time I made waffles, I have to tell you, I used a mix. And I think the mix sat in the refrigerator too long. They did not turn out nice. I do better if I make my own waffles. But my brother, well, you know, he's he's the lazy guy, so he buys the mix, the mixes. He doesn't like to, he likes to cook, but he doesn't like to do all the extra work that it takes to make that stuff. He'd rather buy it pre-processed stuff. I keep telling him when we make when we have lasagna, we could make twice as much for the same price. I keep telling him, but, okay, I'm not going to try to put another score line there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glossy accents on this and on this. Yeah. What did we have for supper last night? I don't remember. Sloppy Joe's. He likes, he, he makes that stuff, Sloppy Joe's, but he, he uses a Sloppy Joe mix. <laughs> Poor old guy. He never really, my mother really never taught him how to cook. I think he learned more from his first wife. He learned, he learned that stuff after, after the fact. I'm going to put some glue on this. So I can't really blame him. He doesn't make gravy. All right. And we're going to put a little stream of glue. I'm going to put a little stream of glue right here. All right. Now, this, and I can't see, that's the problem. Let's turn it this way. Put this right in here and up. Up there. Well, we'll see how that goes. It doesn't feel half an inch. I really needed three-fourths of an inch, a half of an inch. A half of an inch is not enough for Miss Mary. She wants more. I'm going to have to touch this area up. 
And let's press this down. This is the back. It goes like this. And that's just a little over the edge, but it's okay. And look how look how easy that closed up. Well, it uh, here it it closes up easy, but it needs a uh, a mountain, a valley. What's going on here? Do I have to cut it off again? It doesn't seem right to me. That needs to be in more. Let's pull it up before it... It needs to come in more here, which would cover that up, which I'm happy with. Let's, let's put that in more. There. Ta-da! <laughs> and I've got See, I made that little spine on that one. I didn't do that here. I moved it in, but it's not straight. So let's let's straighten it out while it's still straightable. And uh, where's my spine? Right in there. I'm just going to leave it like that on this side. And all of this spine will work out once I get the closure on. It, it needs to find its way. But it's... They're going, yeah, Mary, sure, Mary. Uh-huh, we believe you, Mary. It's these open, open ones. Where's that bobby pin? Did it fall out? It did. Let's bobby pin these two together. Like that. Until I get the closure on there. And let's bobby pin. These two together. And when you get the closure on there, it'll close them up better. You could actually do these three. There. I'm not entirely happy with my back, but... It's getting there. Let's, let's bobby pin these two together. Just until I get the closure on it so it'll fold up nice. I'll, I'll take the bobby pins out eventually. All right, so it goes like this. And once I get the closures, there we go. Now, I did not put this one I made on the front. I made a special little spine for it. I did not do that on the back, and I don't think Rosemary did either. But I I made that on purpose. <laughs> I was struggling with the back too much to do that. So, I think it's found its way here. I don't want to let go of it <laughs> I don't want to let go of it. I could press that front spine out a little too. Like that. It'll be the same thing. I think I will. Just press it out a little. Makes it look more consistent. Don't let
let go of it, Mary. <laughs> I'm happy with it. But now, see, as I'm holding it here and here, that's what the closure will do. By golly, I wish my clip were big enough to... My clip isn't big enough to quite hold everything together there. But it did for now. All right. It's kind of fanning out, but we're, we're going to work with the closure. Ha! Woo! And I'll probably need this glue again. So I'm not going to put it away. I'm hungry. Let's go look at chat. Riri says... Oh, I'm still on that might be the case. Are you guys chatting? Oh, there's Journey. I was way back in chat. Hi, Journey. Hi, Santa. Good morning, Santa. Welcome, welcome, Santa. Sylvia had to leave. Mary, and I have the same affliction. It's now, where did I put that? Syndrome, yeah. Where did that go to now? All right, these bobby pins will not stay in here forever. They're just to kind of hold those spines until I get the closure on it. And the same way with this. So let's get out the rosemary Chinese coins. It's time to explore the caboodle kit. Is that it? Yeah. So let's explore the caboodle kit. I'll probably need that again. I'm done with the thread. All right. I'll probably re-ink that back piece. So in the caboodle kit, I have some stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree. I have some rosemary pages here, some Chinese writing. What I might do some, I won't make clusters out of these, but I might gild some clusters. And look, it's got the Chinese writing there. I have some Chinese fabric that I got at, you know, and it would be nice to double a piece of this fabric over and on those empty spines, just put a fabric page in there. Maybe put a, uh, a piece of car, uh, cardstock in between and do a fabric page, not an entire signature. But I got this at Hobby Lobby. This is really... All right, I'm back. I need to flip it. Okay, we're back. I just have to turn YouTube off and turn it back on and reconnect. Wow, I was only at 89%. Good thing I did that. It looked like my battery was running out of juice, too. It's, re it's recharging now. All right, we're back. I don't know. I happen to be watching chat when that happened, so I think I caught it in time. Tap to retry. Hi, Mina. She said, I stepped outside to get my newspaper, and wham, my allergies got me. Oh, no. I hope you're okay, Mina. Laura says she's back. I don't know where it went down. I was talking about what was in the caboodle. So let's, I haven't got too far into it. So in the caboodle, this I got at the Dollar Tree. This Rosemary did not send it, but I like the little stickers here. I might use a couple of these. Not all of them, just a few, maybe the birds. These came from Rosemary. These are Chinese writing. And I think I'll do some more um, foiling of these letters. I don't know what they mean. They're probably telling us something serious. This is just a tie. This is the fabric that I got at Hobby Lobby. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? But I was saying that I might make a fabric page and just put a piece of cardstock in between and make a one page for those one of those empty mountains there. This is a tie, 
and it's not, it's not a real silk, but I kind of like that tie. It's got some subtle designs in there. Thank you, Brenda. Welcome to everybody. Thank you for sticking with me. That's just wax paper. This is two pieces of the origami paper that Rosemary sent. And I used this and this to... Actually, I think I used this one to cut a stencil that I haven't used yet. I was complaining about... I was saying that I do not stitch with rayon thread. This is rayon thread. I picked it up by mistake. I do not stitch with rayon. Boy, my hands are dry now. This, I think, was what I was looking for. Because there's one, two Chinese coins that I need to get out of here. So we're going to hold that out. This is some calligraphy paper that Rosemary sent. So I might use this when I get to embellishing my pages. And here's some more origami paper. And uh, I might make some flip pages out of this. I can't see cutting it. Rosemary has more origami paper. I don't have, except for what she sent. Isn't that beautiful? And here's this sheet. I'm gonna have to go watch how she embellished. I don't know what she did with this, but this is cool. And here's the black tissue paper that I used for a pattern a reference photo for my cover. And here's some Chinese print collage piece. And the beautiful lady napkin. And some Chinese or Japanese or something text. And some more. And some more. This will all be for embellishing. This is me figuring up the spine, the scoring. And then I had these napkins in my stash. That kind of, they're fuchsia. Fuchsia. But they might look pretty as maybe background on a embellishment or something. And this is, I think, the invoice. Nope, that's just me playing and that's just a blank piece of paper and I could only find three of my did I only make three clusters I thought I made five but I could only find three where I did the gold foiling on here right in there I did gold foiling so I'm going to do some more clusters but not today well do that when I embellish. And here's another napkin. And then this beautiful tissue. I'm going to see, see how she uses that. So, I need to get into here. My hands feel yucky. I need to go out and wash them with soap. I want to get those Chinese coins and the raffia. She sent some raffia. Let me get it. It's out over here, I believe. In the bottom of the barrel. Is it in here? Where did I put it? Oh! Where did I put that raffia? Oh, I thought it was in one of these boxes here. Here. She uses that on the, as to tie the spine together. She sent that in her kit. And I'm going to use the Chinese coins. Now what I don't have is when she puts those coins on the edges, she uses a little, like a chopstick or something. And I don't have that. I might have to fake it with a paintbrush. I might have to saw one of my paintbrushes off. That'd work, wouldn't it? Let's get the, the coins out of here. What time is it? 7.48. I, this is uh, Thursday. I can go until 9. Oh, look. She's got some cut here. Already. I wonder if she meant that for the spine. Let's get the coins out of here. The coins is what we want. Now, 
There's one. The other one's in here someplace. I saw two. Oh, I'm going to have to pull everything out. I think she means that for... I don't know what she means that for. I saw two coins. Where's my other coin? Oh, no. I saw two. There it is. All right, we're good. And this is all for embellishment. And I'm glad she sent all this because I do not have a lot of Asian papers. And she sent me more than enough to, to use. Look at that beautiful bird. And it's the Ace of Spades. Oh, some origami papers. Just some pattern paper. I think this is that Jaws paper for the needle. Well, is that for the needle book or is that just metallic? I don't and It looks like the Jaws for some needles. Needles! <coughs> some pretty fabric here. Oh, that's beautiful. We'll be using these for embellishing. Gold! A piece of gold. I think I saw her pull out a gold piece of fabric. And in one of her streams, she was sewing something similar to that. All right, let's put all this back. I got my coins out here. And my raffia. Um, I don't know. She sent me a big piece here. And then she sent this. I'm going to keep both those out. I watched her do the closure, but I did not pay too much attention to how she did the... She wraps the stick. I need to, I need to cut some paint brushes up to get little sticks. So we're going to do that next. Get these back in the bag. These bags close up on you. out of there. Just get a couple pieces in there to get started. Uh. These larger pieces are harder to get in. themselves. These caboodles are so fun because, do you know, I would have to hunt and hunt and hunt to put together a kit like this. I can add to the kit, but to have a complete kit at the ready, you know, and that's what I like about the caboodles. Rosemary says, you never use my stuff, but I do use it, but I add to it. I I would have to hunt all over the place to find pieces like this and to make them coordinate. And it'd be even harder for my Asian one. I'm just going to leave this out. It'd be even harder for my Asian one because, well, I might be able to find a couple napkins, but to find all of this... I'd probably give up before I got started. I'm, you know, I could go get some fabric at the fabric store and maybe some stickers, but it's nowhere near what she sends to us. I'm going to keep that out. I'm going to keep the raffia out and my china coins. 
So, Rosemary, I like your caboodles. All right. I'll clean my fingers off again. They feel grimy. Probably getting dry from all the alcohol. I had some hand cream here. I don't know what happened to it. But I don't want to get it all oily either. I'll put hand cream on afterwards. They just feel grimy. Well, they are grimy. Excuse me while I clean my fingers. Alrighty. So, where's my caboodle? Huh. Where's my caboodle? What did I do with it? I put it up here, and then I put my folder on top of it. All right. So, let's unclip this and let it breathe. We want to put, and I think I'll put something in here to... Actually... This goes more like that, but I flattened it out, and I think I like it flattened out, but what did I do here? What did I do here? Did I glue those together? A little leaking glue there. Oh, I put I bobby pinned them together. <laughs> Excuse me, I got to pull the bobby pin out. Let's pull all the bobby pins out now. No, let's leave the others in. So I flattened this one out, which means I only allowed for the spine there, but I flattened it out, which means that I'm going to have to put it back in. Because I need my spines to be even. So this is going to have to be a square spine after all, I think. Or at least until I get the... At least until I get the buttons on it, the closures on it. I think the closures will help it close up a lot more. Will help it find its shape. Where is it? The, so the coins, I have to cut a little stick to go... She wraps a stick around these, and she glues the, and I think she means these to be the ties. But why did she send this? I think she uses this on here, but it ties around, and I only got one of these. I'm... I like this, but I think I'm going to go with this. So let's find a paintbrush to cut up. Because I need, I don't have a, I don't have a skewer. We don't buy skewers. So I'm going to use a paintbrush. We're going to cut some little sticks out of my paintbrush. And let's, shall we use a brand new one? Let's see. What do I have here? I guess I'll pull one out of there. Or should I use a color? Are these are these brown? Those are blue. Or should I use a, an old one? Let's use let's use the old one. Where is that thread coming from? I got a thread hanging here coming from someplace over on my cart. Okay. So, I feel like painting this red, or gold. But we're going to cut it first. So she wraps this around the stick. The stick comes this way, I believe. I think that she uses this to wrap with. And tie. That's why I only got one. Because she uses one on each side. And then she puts the raffia underneath. 
and the raffia she i saw her tape that the raffia comes across the raffia comes here and then she puts the button on top of it that's how she does it okay we'll do it that way but i think i'm going to paint my how about an inch and a half an inch and a half for this it's going to get bigger on one side an inch and a half, I think, will do. I might have to get my little saw out to cut that. If my knife won't, I found my knives. And I got some new brushes, so we'll, we'll use that old one. And I can still use the brush if I don't destroy it. So, I think I said an inch and a half, which is right, right there. You know what? I might be able to cut it with my old scissors. I think that's what I did when I was doing the... Well, I cut that off. Let's see. Where's my mark? An inch and a half is right. Right there. I love Tim Holtz. Scissors. <laughs> There went my brush over the cliff. We'll have to get out another one. <laughs> That's okay, because I wanted another rounding tip there, too. And, oh, look it. Split it there. We'll put that on the underneath. We'll, we'll use, I'll have to get out another brush. I think I got another old one in here. But it's red. Do I have another blue one? I'm not going to dig it out from over the cliff. I'm going to see what I have over here before I... Where are my paintbrushes? Where's my jar of paintbrushes? Let's see what I have over here in the mug. Oh, Deborah Brown. How can I pick this up without thinking about Deborah Brown? She passed away. She did this mug for me. Bless her heart. Oh, every time I look at this now, I'll think of Deborah. The only blue one, they're all brown. But I'm going to paint them gold anyway. This one looks a little thinner. Let's... Let's do that one, and I'm going to paint. Well, that one, is that the same size? It's about the same size. It's a little bit thicker. Do I have a thinner one? Got a plastic one. That one's a little thinner. Let's use that one. These are just brushes I've had around. I keep buying them because I'm so hard on them, as you can tell. Don't send your coins over the cliff. All right, so we want another inch and a half, and there's that split. I might be able to put that back in there and paint it. Let's put a little glossy accent on that. Let's fix it. My hand's shaky. It won't be perfect, but it'll look better. And then I'll paint that, and it'll be all good again. Nobody will know but you and me. All right, this one might split too. I need an inch and a half right here. And I guess I'll hold both sides here if I can. Let's get it started. How 
am I going to do it? Maybe it's move that down a little. I, I need my brother to hold this. <laughs> I need I need an extra hand. There. I did it. And I'll dig that other and I can still use that as a paintbrush. I'll put it back down in the barrel here. Now I've got two, two sticks, and what you do is paint them gold. So let's put the glue back on my, the pen back in my glue. Put this knife back. I'm going to need that knife when I get tomorrow morning we have our tomorrow morning is our time for art stream and I come on at uh, 6 30 I believe the schedules up on my my uh, YouTube messed with the community tab I can't just post a straight text post I have to put a picture and post a post under the picture. They won't let you. They said it's not available for public viewing. Weird. So I don't know if that's a intended and intended to be that way or what. But I can't just post a text post. They call them discussions. They're dropping discussions on the community tab. You can drop links and you can put pictures in and you can put in polls, polling. So what I did is I put a link to the playlist, I believe, on my community tab. But in order to see the schedule for the hop, you're going to have to go inside the comments area. And I pinned the schedule under it. I don't know. Why do they mess things up like that? Why can't they just leave it alone? Well, I'll tell you why. I understand the reasoning why. They're giving more people. They're giving the community tab to more people. And they're trying, because they've added more people with community tab, they're cutting down on the discussions. <laughs> we'll give you more people, but you can't talk as much. <laughs> but you can talk in the comments. Weird. Or at least I can. I don't know if anybody else can. But that's where the schedule is on, on my community tab. I should start putting it, at, well, Instagram is kind of the same way. But I put it on Fibsville. It's on Fibsville, the schedule. And when I stream tomorrow morning, I will put it out uh, in the description box of my stream. And there'll be a playlist, too. All right. I want some gold paint. Gold fixes everything, except for YouTube. Gold can't... Well, if they let me paint YouTube gold, it might fix it a little. <laughs> and I can't get this open this morning because I used I did wash here let me get my other scissors out those aren't sharp enough so when I have a sticky lid here this is what I do especially it works with the plastic ones just get under here and you can bang you can use hot water you can put Vaseline you can put a piece of plastic but I don't bother with all that. I just get my scissors out and and, and unscrew it because it sticks. It's sticky there. And, it, you know, I'm, I have to say I'm a little lazy with doing all that other extra stuff. See, it's pretty, pretty cruddy around the rim. But all I want to do is I put my little paintbrush away. But this one will work. I want to paint my little sticks. 
gold. And I suppose I'll have to dry them. Let's get my pliers out. Ow! We'll hold on to that. Let's finish painting it all around. It's a little dry up there at the top, isn't it? Now, I could have left that brown and red, but no, let's make it gold. We didn't get this side very well over here. Make sure we get all the sides. All right. Yeah, let's dry this with my heat gun. That's why I got the pliers out. What time is it? 8 10. Hi, Candy. Hi, Riri. Karen Reese says, Thank you for the warm welcome. Welcome, Karen. Isn't everybody in here friendly? Thank you, Karen. You're new to our stream. I was all involved in looking for my coins and painting my paintbrush. She says, Karen Reese says, Thank you for the warm welcome. Yes, Rachel Joan Fleming. Is Rachel in here? I follow Dee Dee and see your name over there. Good morning, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel says, I seen your name in Dee Dee's room, Karen. Rachel says, nice to see a new face, Karen. A great group of folks in here. Yes, they all welcome you in here. Very nice. Uh... She says, Karen says, hi, Mary. I'm new to your channel. Glad I caught you live. Well, we're glad to have you, Karen. Welcome, welcome. Rachel says, oh, yay, Roy. We'll check it out this afternoon. I've not been able to see many lives lately. Riri, let's see, what did Roy say? Roy is Bootsy Sweetheart. She says, I put up a short video last night. Now I'm making some iCads to use up some scraps. I'm also working on a fun project for Mary's Video Hop, which will be the fourth Saturday in November. Can't wait to see it, Roy. He's been busy, busy, busy. I'll try to get it watched today, too, Roy. Um, Anne's chat room. Anna Lar is opening up her Facebook room at 10, and I'm going to be... I guess that's pretty dry. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to cut that frame, the middle part of that frame out of my frame loom with a saw. I didn't want to bore everybody this morning trying to frame, saw that little board out of the middle. And uh, I'm, I need to catch up on my alphabet that I'm carving for, I'm carving the ABCs and words for Carve November. I'm doing Carve November instead of Carve December because December is going to be crazy busy. And that back keeps introducing us to new projects. I have to close my ears, Becky. I told Lisa, I said, Lisa, I can't start one more new project. Then I watched her. Uh, she's weaving she she was weaving on a a cardboard loom but she showed us last week how to do a frame loom warp a frame loom so that's where where i'm going with i bought a canvas and i'm turning it upside down and i'm going to leave the canvas in it and i asked lisa if i could do that and she said yes and i go well uh, I could paint my pattern right on the back of the canvas. And she said, yes, you could do that. 
But what did I do? I painted it on a piece of paper instead. But my goal for today is just to get that wooden piece out. I had to go buy a saw. I didn't want to use the electric one because they scare me. That's pretty dry. I'm going to let it dry over here. The electric saws scare me, and I, I think it was too big for my... It's too big to just cut out that little board. It would rip up my canvas. And we're painting these little... I didn't have any sushi sticks or whatever you call them. Uh... Because I really don't eat Chinese. And I didn't have any skewers. We don't really make kebabs. Although skewers can be used for a lot of different things. But I didn't have any. Or if I have some. I haven't run across any. I used to have some. Up in Wisconsin. <laughs> so I cut the ends off of a couple paint brushes. And I'm painting them gold. And this is for the closure. Rosemary does this. He's our expert caboodler. Makes beautiful journals. And, uh, you know that music box I got? I didn't like it. I ordered it from Amazon and I went to return it. They have on your order, if you want to return something off your order that you got and it didn't work for you, you can return it within a certain number of days. And I went to return it and they tell you where to take it when you return it. You know what they told me where to take it? They said, keep it. We don't want it back. <laughs> so you can see why I didn't like it. If they tell me to keep it, I'm going, it must not be worth sending back to you. I didn't like to have to crank it all the time. And uh, I know that if you put it in, once you get it attached to your box or inside of a box, that sound would be a little louder. But the sound was awfully faint. So I was telling Rosemary, I wanted a, last night, I want a wind-up one. She said, you won't have that same problem with a wind-up one. And so she sent me the link last night after she got done with her chat. And I went out and looked at it. And I'm going, oh, there's another one underneath of it. It's a little bit more expensive, but they have different, they have more tunes. So, I didn't order it yet, but I think I'm going to order one. I can't decide what tune I want. And I think it'll probably be, it has a little tool that comes with the music box. If you want to turn it off, you can take the little tool and stop it. And I think it's a wind-up one. I'm pretty sure it is. It's not one you have to sit and sit and crank to hear the music. I don't want to have to sit and crank to hear the music. I think this is dry. Alright, so I've got two gold sticks now, and I should take some time and clean this off, but this is why I don't, because I'm on live. And so let's see if I can get this lid back on. I use this paint to do those washes, and it's, it's getting pretty crummy at the top here. Where's my palette knife? Let's get some of this off. Let it go down to the bottom. Don't want it in inside the... This is why it's stuck. Let's get some of that goo off here. Let's get a towel.
This would make great texture, but I'm going to use the back of this. I'm going to paint the back of this, but not today. Well, I might do it in the chat room. Let's get some of this crud off of it. I love my palette knives. They come in handy in a, for all sorts of things rather than just painting. Ew. I like gold paint, but it's gooey. if I can get that out of there. Now you can take your heat gun and I don't want to get it too dry up in there but melt some of that. I do that with my glue pot and it helps get it out of there. just get a start on it especially where it's so cruddy I still have to clean the burner I melted a plastic plate holder, paper tape, paper towel, a paper uh, plate, plate holder. It was plastic, and I set it down on a hot burner, and it melted the plastic on the burner. And I used the heat gun to melt that plastic, and I'm I'm not done doing that yet. My brother probably wants his burner back. Violet told me to put it in the freezer. I haven't done that yet either. Why not, Mary? Because it's over here behind my chair somewhere. This is why you want to clean off your jars, before wipe it off before you screw that cap back on. But I get busy. I'm going to stop there. That's pretty good. Let's see what's on the inside here. This is pretty gooey in here. Let's just take all this out. I've had this paint for a long time, but I used a lot of it the other day when I was doing those pages, washing those pages. Let's get some of this off. I don't know how much of that will come off without coaxing it. All right, that's enough. Halfway clean. All right, let's throw all that crud away. Little cleaning session there. Let's see how the lid fits on there better. Should. Not totally. Where's the. There we go. 
All right, that's good enough. Now, what we need to do, I cut this Rafi in half, and I think what she did is she wrapped it around here and through the, I don't know exactly how she did this. Maybe she comes through, well, I'll just do it my way. <laughs> Rosemary said, that's what Mary does at her way all the time. And she makes a little spool, and I think she comes up, threads that through. Maybe I'll go around one more time. And come in the coin. Put the coin on there. Yay! Now I think the the stick is on the top. The stick is on the top. I think I want my... Let's try this. I'm not sure this is going to... Is this stick on the top, Rosemary? Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm going to put them through. I'm going to put them through the bottom and then come up through. I'm not sure if that's what she did. Let's put them through the bottom. Does it make a difference on this coin? Yes. So this is the bottom. It doesn't have much of a design on it. Put them through there. Both of them. At the same time. <laughs> I want them both the same length almost. Like that. Let's give it a twist here. And get it in the center. And I want to come from the top down. Well, I'm not getting them through at the same time. Get in there. I'm not sure this is how Rosemary did this. Right, let's tighten this up. And I want to take and put a, a knot here and go back through so my, my little threads are on top. But I have to knot it here on the bottom. Where is it? Rosemary says, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're doing it all wrong, Mary. <laughs> As usual, that's not how I did it. <laughs> I can hear her saying, Mary. All right, this is the bottom. No, that's, yeah, that's the bottom. Now, I want to, I want these threads out on top, though. So, can I thread it? Yeah, I can. I can thread it back through. I want my threads on top. I'm not sure she might have left her threads on the bottom if she did it this way. But I want my threads out on the top, so I'm going to thread these back through if I can. I know I can this one. Get in there. I need my pokey tool. And tweezers. Get in there. Come on. There. Oh, I'm pulling the whole thing out again. That may not work. Because I'll just pull it, the knot right out of it. Let's let's not do that, Mary. Even though you want it out on top. I don't know how Rosemary had hers, but I guess mine are going to be on the bottom, like so. 
That might be how she had it. It doesn't look right to me, though. Oh, well, it's, it's okay. And maybe I'll clip them off a little. Just tighten it up. And straighten it out. And then I think I think that's how she had it. And then she has the other raffia coming underneath. I'm not totally sure. It's been a while since I watched her video. Let's do the other other one. This is the one I think that I fixed. We'll put that toward the center. Oh, but you know what? Yeah, I did that right. Okay, so the other piece. What time is it? 8.30. I'll at least get these glued on. I'll at least get them glued on and maybe the ties. And I need to find buttons for the back. I don't think she sent buttons for the back. So I need to find some buttons to put on the back for the back tie. But I think I've made good progress on this this morning. I just need to do the closure and the closure will really make a difference on how those spines stay in place because it really did on my other journal. All right, we're gonna tie this one more time. That's not how I did it, Mary. <laughs> I can just hear her. You never follow directions. Leave it to Mary to not follow my directions. All right. Now, I want this on the top. And so these go through the bottom from the top down. For me, I don't, you have to go check out. I think she bound this journal either in part two or part, no, it was probably be part four, three or four where she bound the journal. Because she, she made all the spines and, I mean, all the signatures and bound the signatures in. So it was probably part three or part four of her Asian caboodle from last month where she actually does this part. I watched it. I watched it. I even took notes, but I didn't take note on exactly the procedure that she used to tie these. But I think I got very similar. And she may have just glued this like this instead of putting a knot in there, but my knot isn't that big. It flattens out pretty good. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put a knot in it. But Mary, that isn't how I did it. You never do what I do. You always go off on your own tangent. <laughs> and it's always wrong. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. You're doing it wrong. Whoops, this needs to come this way. You're doing it wrong, Mary. That's not right. It's wrong. There. Oh, I like it anyway. All right. Let's get the journal out. I like my journal. There goes my red thread. So this will come. Oh, this is going to look nice. Let's see. I think I'll put them, point them up. I think she pointed hers across, though. But then I'll have to have the threads going like this. And she glues them down. But before she glues them down, she puts a thread. Where's the other one? She puts a thread under it. So for, for right now, we're just going to put these like that. But... We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there, I know, to put the thread under it. But I want to see how this looks. Oh, this is going to be cool. 
cool. Only further apart. More like that. All right. So now we're ready for this part. And what she does is she takes, and I think this is what she used to bind it with. I think she sent this to me in this packet. Because I got it from someplace. <laughs> And this feels kind of waxy. This is American Oak Preserving Company. This is raffia, but this is oak raffia. This is not paper. This is oak. When wrapping gifts, creating gift baskets, and even designing wreaths, American Oak Raffia provides that lasting detail, that last detail and finishing touch to create a simple old-fashioned charm. So I think the fact that it's oak makes it a little stronger. I don't know. I'm just imagining. Let's see if I can get it untied. Wrong way. Penelope, I need a needle. Rosemary talks to Popo. I talk to Penelope. <laughs> I talk to Penelope. Popo talks back. Penelope just sits and watches. She, I have no idea what Penelope is thinking. She keeps her thoughts to herself. But she's always there with a needle when I need it. She has all my needles. All right, there we go. Oh, look, I don't need all of that. This is enough for the first, and I do like how stringy it is. So this is this is, well, this is kind of thin. This is thicker. I think I'm going to use the thick stuff. And maybe I'll use this for a cluster or something. <laughs> Let's cut it off there. Because you do a piece from the front and a piece from the back. And I'm going to let the thick stuff go to the back. And you let, she spreads it out though. Let's see, she, this is pretty, she takes this and after she gets it on there, she'll take and open this up. Does it open? Open? I cut my fingernails, so. Yeah, it'll open up a little. Does she use more than one piece? Can I use more than one piece? Where's that other? Can I use two here? Would that be wrong? Would I have too much going there? I think I'm going to use two. But what she does, I'm going to have to figure out how far down. Where's my ruler? This is... About an inch down. Maybe an Let's move it an inch and a fourth. Right there. That might be. Let's move it up a little. About an inch down. Let's measure that again. About an inch down. And I'm going to leave a little more there. I'm going to use two. And if it gets too bad, I'll snip one off. Now, she used a piece of tape. I hate putting double-sided tape on this because I know what did it. Uh, where's my bobby pins? Well, let's just let it fall. 
let's get some painter's tape. I think this will even pull up on it too, but maybe not as bad. And about an inch down, I'm going to leave a good, I'm going to leave a good amount here because I can always snip off. One's longer than the other, but that's okay. We'll snip it. And you put it here to kind of hold it. And then you glue your coin down there. Like that. And I'm not sure what way Rosemary had her... pieces pointing her ribbons. I think this was this way. And I might just put a little glue in there. Can I do that? Because that sticks kind of wonky. I think it's the way I tied it on the back. So I'm going to do that with a needle, I think, or a pen. Penelope, I'll use one of these old ones. I'm going to put a little bit of glue inside here to keep that from slipping off, to keep my stick from slipping off. We can even use the pin that's in here. Let's put a little glue on my desk. Well, if it will come out, that is. There. Put a little bit of I can get it in there. Oh, I wanted to say tomorrow morning is our live stream hop. I think I come on about six to introduce it. And, uh, but I'm going to come on at 4 30 because tomorrow is also the, um, Susan Hiles has her her uh, Cherie crafting with Cherie and Susan, and they are doing doilies and trim. Whatever you want to do, they don't have. It's not a cluster. You can make clusters. I'm not going to. Um, I'm got. I have a project I want to work on tomorrow morning, but I can only be on for about an hour because. I'll have to sign off and sign back on again for the stream. I think that'll tend to hold it. Now, this is glued down, taped down there. I want to take some glue and glue this raffia down. And I'm using glossy accent. That seems to work for me. And then my button will go on top of that. Was this the one I was working with? Yeah. So let's put some glue on the back of the button. And sloppily put it on there. And where's my towels? We don't want it all leaking out here. Let's get a little of that out of there. Hold that down. And that will be the front tie. And we'll do the other one. And but I'm I can't do the back ones today. I don't want to glue my masking tape. 
on there. Let's take this off now. I don't want to do the... <sighs> buttons, to the back ones today. I'm just going to do the front ones. And I did two here. I might twist them together and tie it at the end. Twist them here. I'll do that after it's all dry. And I'm just going to hold this for a little bit. I suppose I should just let it rest now. And it, it dries pretty good if you don't go messing with it. Becky says, just leave it alone. <laughs> You can just hear Becky saying that. Just leave it alone. All right, here's the other one. And I'm going to do the same that I've got stuff on my hands. Let's cut some more raffia. And I like the thicker side of this. I like the thicker side. Look at that. I'm going to use that if I can get it out of here. Oh, it's twisted in there. Can it come out? Yeah. Come out, come out. Right here. This is oak raffia, which makes me think it's stronger than a paper raffia because it's oak, it's wood. But I'm probably messing this up good by trying to get this thick stuff out. Now, let's see what I have here. It's... Very interesting to come off of the... Is that enough? That's enough for the first. I like a little bit more. Can you get in there? It's all caught under there. Let's just pull it. Oh, beautiful, pull. Oh, good. Let's pull on that a little more. There we go. Ooh, I like that. And I'm going to use two again. I probably only need one of this, but I'm going to use two, and I'm going to twist them together. I might take a thick and a thin. Let's cut this off here. Let's save one of these for the back and let's grab a thin piece here. And where's my other one? We'll do a thick and a thin. I'm gonna do that on the tie. No, I want that to show through. And what I'm going to do is twist this together and then I'll tie it at the end here. I'm going to use two of them here. Let's cut this off a little. So this will spread out like that. Well, no, it'll be a tape down. I'm sorry. Look, I cut tissue on my fingernails. How did that happen? Can't do anything with it on there. Where that came from. All right. We don't need that. We're going to tape down a piece here underneath. I'm going to use this again. We're going to tape it down here. Oop, not up so high. Down in there. About there. I think. And then my button. Where's my button? Come on, where'd you go off to? Here. Now. I think I'm going to put some of that glue again in here, right in there if I can. 
and down in there. I think I need some more on my table. I don't like the idea of that wood piece sliding off of it. I could just glaze the whole thing. Wouldn't hurt it. Let's just glaze it onto the wood. That won't hurt it. And then it won't fall off of the raffia. Pull it in a little more. And I might glue it some more once I get it down. So let's glue this down. And this will be about all I can do on on this until these dry. And I won't probably work on this until Sunday night because I'll be gone tonight. And tomorrow morning I'm going to work on two things. Oh, um, I'll, is that going to be enough? I don't think I put well it seems to be enough I'm going to put some more, some more glue in there um, I'm going at 4.30 in the morning I'm going to do a live stream for Sue and Cherie's hashtag craft with Cherie and Susan and they're doing lace and trim and I've got a project in mind that I want to do for that. But I'm only going to be on for 45 minutes to an hour. And then around 6 o'clock, I believe, I'll have to check the schedule. But I'll make sure I'm right. I will um, be introducing the Time for Art Hop. And our Time for Art Hop, I did a playlist... I did a playlist and an introduction video, and Becky has a video out there of her exploding canvas, and I'll cut this down a little when I'm done. So I think what I'm going to do is put a weight on this, put a book on this, and let it hold these down a little. I might put some more glue. Well, no. Well, yes. Let's, let's tuck some glue in there. underneath of here. And uh, there's a playlist and introduction video showing what I'm going to do. And Becky's doing an exploding canvas. She already did her video for that. So these are going to be twisted. I don't want to do it now because these are, I'll, t I'll pull them loose. But I, these are going to be kind of twisted together, folded together, like so, like this. And then I'll tie it at the end. And this will be this tie. And then I'm going to do the same thing with buttons on the back. That's how Rosemary did I'm loving it, Rosemary. I might clip these down a little bit more. Let's take that tape off. I love it, Mary, Rosemary. I do like this. It's coming out really nice. So let me, well, I, I tell you, I'll use this as my thumbnail. I'll use this as my thumbnail. Let's tuck that in there. And that will kind of hold it even. And then I'll put a book over this. I'll have to put it over to the other side because I'm going to work on my desk during Anne's craft room. I have to get some breakfast. Yay! I struggled a bit with that, but I think it's going to turn out nice. You always struggle when you're learning new stuff. Let's put my scissors away. And I think I painted gold with that. Which one did I paint gold? Did I put it in the... And what's this? That's my all. Let's put that away. And 
what did I use this for? I think I, that was my gold one and I washed it all out here. So I still have the back. I got to hunt up some buttons for the back and we're getting done. We're getting done with the binding part. We're getting done with the binding and uh, then I can embellish. That's going to be fun too. I worked on this most of the morning because I had to bind three signatures and uh, do the cover and the buttons and that took me all morning. Let me come out and say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, Anne. I have good teachers, don't I? We have good teachers. Rosemary is a very good teacher. I like her caboodles. And as I was saying earlier, one of the reasons why I like these caboodles, not only because I think Rosemary is very talented at doing them, one of the reasons why I like them is because, um, well, it would depend on the topic. I do not have a lot of Asian things. And for me to hunt up all the supplies that she put in there, all those all the and it's all themed and for me to gather i mean like i could probably go to a book sale and maybe find a china book but that wouldn't be the same as a tissue paper and origami paper and you know um text and text from here and raffia and and the chinese coins all of that i can do this i can do that just fine but for me to gather that all together in a kit would take me all year <laughs> so rosemary does a wonderful job of putting together her kits then you get to the caboodles she does them all online uh she has classes that she sells like the 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 uh thread book is a class and she has she had an encaustic class uh, I don't know if she's still selling that one out there. You'd have to talk to her. She could, Probably the videos are out there. But she also has a class that she's doing for a photo album that we're going to turn, we're going to put, well, you can do it both ways. Um, but I'm going to do the music box option. Or you can do it with or without the music box option. And uh, she does, like yesterday, last night, even though I'm not, at the point to where I can work on the Egyptian one that she's doing for this month. I, it was interesting to listen to her. Because she used to work, I don't know if he was a framer or if he was an artist that showed in galleries. I'm not sure who she worked for. But she did gilding for him. And she had to be very professional about it. She had to do a good job. So she knows what she's talking about. And I learned a lot last night. I really enjoyed their stream last night. So that's Rosemary Morris. And this is my version of her Asian caboodle from last month. And I'm going to get it done. Thank you, Becky. Hi, Angie. So let's see. Don't forget Anne's Craft and Chat Room and Lar on Facebook. Um has a craft and chat room that she's opening up. I'm going to come in there after I get some breakfast, Dan. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to work on erasers and my frame loom. Rachel says it's Remembrance Day in Canada, and I think it's your Memorial Day. It's our Veterans Day today. It's our Veterans Day. Our Memorial Day is at the end of May. We're honoring all of our military. Thank you, for your service. And that's what Rachel says. Thank you to all our service people and their families. May peace prevail and wars end forever. That's a good way to end this stream, isn't it? May peace prevail and wars end forever. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow morning at 4.30. Have a great day and make it a memory. Quoting Rachel. Bye.